uh, a few things that we want to do. First of all, either you can sit doing the dissection or you can stand. As you grow older, you may want to sit. But if you want to stand, then you want to make sure that you're comfortable. So wear good shoes. And you cannot be having a bipolar in one leg and a divider in one leg. You'll end up dancing like that the whole day. And with an angle like this, you'll get a backache for sure. So you control the divider and the drill. Let a colleague control the bipolar so that you are stable with one leg. The other thing is how you hold the scope. There are many ways of holding the scope. But you want to hold a scope in a way that you're most comfortable, that does not injure your wrist, elbow, and shoulder, where your wrist is completely mobile. So if you hold a scope like this, if you hold a scope like this, then your wrist is going to be fixed. You want to hold a scope in such a way that you're balancing it with your thumb, and then you're closing it. So this is completely mobile, step one. Step number two, you want your shoulders to be equal. It's very easy for us to operate like that. You will end up with a shoulder surgery after 20 years. Enough people have gone for shoulder surgeries and knee surgeries because of ENT. We need to retire without any surgery because of ENT. In giving health to people, don't destroy our health. Shoulder, same length, armpits, close. It's also good if you sweat a lot to keep your armpits closed as well. Same length, armpits closed. Very important, okay? Are you all done? Okay, my two-two, I'll wait for you. Metronics is doing the IGS. Because, because it's not fresh frozen, it's a little bit more difficult to register because the skin is a bit harder. It's, 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 it's a soft uh, embalming. As I mentioned before, they've already used it for rhinoplasty, so... Can we start, guys? No? Sir, uh, can we use an uh, endo holder uh, so to have both uh, hands free? Because some of the people, they are uh, using it. But Especially you have, when you are doing under general anesthesia. But you have a lot of endo holders. Now ask your one of your residents to hold for you. You got a new model every year. Yes. Good looking new model every year. Why you want to buy an endo holder? Right? Then I've got one endo holder next to me. Where's my <laughs> other endo holder? He left me and went. <laughs> okay. So it's better for a, a person to hold your scope. Yes. Then you have a dynamic movement, yeah? If you have an endo holder, then your movement is not dynamic. I think the endoscopic uh, picture is not coming on the screen. Yeah. They are uh, trying it. Sir. No problem. Loose connection. No problem. Understand. So in the meantime, the dissection I'm going to do, I'm going to be using quite basic instruments. A sickle... Oh. No view, okay. A sickle knife, a Blakesley, a Frears elevator, uh, a curette for optic nerve decompression, and a carison punch. A oh, really scissors as well. So, this is what I'm going to use for the dissection afterwards, okay? So, with these five instruments or so, you can do the whole. It's working? Yes, Perfect, sir. let's go. Yeah, okay. now it is coming, sir. Uh, this elevator. So here you can see this elevator. You see the septal flap is already been cut because of the previous previous rhinoplasty. So what I've done is, Blixley, I have packed the middle meters exactly like how we will do a surgery. So let's do the dissection exactly like how we will do a surgery. So this becomes like a flight simulation. You know how pilots go for training with a flight simulator? So if we do a dissection exactly like how we will do in real life with the same instrument, same steps, this becomes a flight simulator for us. So let's go straight into the dissection, okay? In view of flight. So can you show us the maxillary line? And uh, because uh, uh, the beginners are the residents. Can so I at least start first, uh, boss? I won't even start. Yes. 
what if you let me start first? Okay, so this is the inferior turbinate. That's the middle turbinate. Yes, sir. So if you go medial to this, you will see the superior turbinate, correct? The same way, this will be your maxillary line here where your lacrimal sac would be. Yes, sir. So you go into the middle meters now, and you will see the unsinate process, gate number one. Okay? Gate number two is the bulla. In this case, if there's an air cell above, it's a supra bulla air cell. Yes, sir. If there's an air cell behind this, it's a retro bulla air cell. And if the middle turbinate turns laterally like that, this becomes your ground lamella. That's the vertical segment. That's the horizontal segment. Okay? If you remember the gate, then the dissection becomes very easy. There are two ways of doing an ansinectomy. An anti-grade and a retrograde. I like to do an anti-grade resection. So you touch this, you can see where it's touching exactly along the maxillary line here. So your lacrimal sac will be above here. If you touch this, you will find where it's moving. So put your freeous elevator into this line. And then what is most important is go inferiorly. When you go inferior, you take off the uncinate process. And when you take off the uncinate process, automatically you've opened up the maxilla. Yes, sir. One simple step, Tukate. There is there. One simple step, and you've already opened up for a mini fest. You have done now almost 80% of the surgery by one simple movement of your instrument. You this way? Okay. If it's too dark, we can have the lights on if you want. Eh? It's okay? You like working in the dark, isn't it? So that is the unsinate tail. Very, very important. Only if you have removed the unsinate tail, you have a view of the maxilla. Can maxilla. you see? Yes, sir. So that's gate number one. If you want to enlarge the maxilla, all you have to do is to dissect lower like this and flip it open. What you don't want to do is to de destroy the mucoclearly clearance. This is more than enough. Okay, that's gate number one. Now, and always keep a little bit at the upper part of the ansinate because that's your landmark for frontal. Okay? So your ansinate will always give you a vertical shelf backwards. And depending on the attachment of, of the ansinate process, whether it's to the middle turbinate or whether it's into the skull base or the orbit, you will know the opening of your frontal recess. So now this is a zero-degree scope on the top of the nose. I'm putting the zero-degree scope on the floor of the nose. I'm going to look up. And you'll be able to see, you should be able to see the frontal recess up there. Yes, sir. We can, we can so see it. Just yes. by using a simple zero degree scope, putting on the floor. I told you I was a lazy surgeon, right? The same way now, we're going to open gate number two. Gate number two is the stomach of a prosperous guy. I'm getting there as well. My stomach is getting bigger as well. So, where do you go in for gate number two? You go in right in the center and open up the space. Yes. You are inside the bulla. Next week? Yeah. It's... So you can see the difference between a fresh golden cadaver and a soft embalming. Yeah? Yes, sir. Soft embalming. So you open this and you preserve the mucosa. Can you see? So ansinate is open. Gate number one. Gate number two. The bulla is open, open, and I preserve all the mucosa. Okay, gate number three would be the ground lamella. Correct? You see where it's turning. So, because of a dissection, now I'm going to remove the mucosa so that you can see it much clearer. Okay, that's the mucosa that I'm removing, which we will not do in real life. For dissection, we're going to remove so that you can see much clearer. And once we have removed the mucosa. Can you see gate number three? Very clearly right. seen. So now yeah. you have the vertical aspect of ground lamella. This is where the ground lamella turns medially. That's the vertical aspect, horizontal aspect. Where do you go? The junction of the vertical and horizontal aspect. Go in between and you enter posterior edmonds. Can you see guys? 
Anterior adenoids will be kept with multiple air cells. Posterior adenoids will be few air cells, but large air cells. That's posterior adenoids. So gate number one, uncinate open. Gate number two, bulla open. Bulla. You remove the tail of the uncinate, your maxilla is open. Gate number three, ground lamella is open. Clear so far? Yes. Okay. It was so quiet, I thought you all fell asleep for a while. Okay. Now, gate number four is the anterior wall of sphenoid sinus. How do we know we are in the posterior adenoids? All you need to do is dissect here and identify the superior turbinate. Can you see? Yes, sir. If you have identified the superior turbinate, then automatically you know that we are in the posterior adenoids. There. See? Correct? So if you push the superior turbinate medially, medially yes. you will be able to identify the sphenoid ostea. There's a lot of scar tissue here. That's ostea. Can you see? Yes, sir. Clear, okay. clear. So see, the same see. way, yes. gate number four is, will be the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus. So all we need to do is go to gate number three. Let me remove the mucosa a bit eh, so that you have a better view, right? So now I'm going to remove the mucosa of gate number four. Sir, are you changing the direction of the scope from gate three to, uh, gate three to grade uh, four? No, no, it's, it's a zero degree scope all the way. Yeah, and uh, means uh, turning the, the endoscope little medially. Uh, no, no, it's the same place. Okay, sir. Does it look as if I changed? No, nah, I don't know. I'm just asking. No, no, I, I didn't change. Okay, sir. I told you I'm a lazy surgeon, right? <laughs> Keep life simple. Life is complicated enough. Keep surgery simple. Fine. So now I'm going to go to that's gate number four. Okay. Remember yes. uh, sphenoid ostea, correct? Yes. So when you go through this, always keep medial right. and inferior. Yes. Uh -huh. And that will take us straight to the sphenoid sinus here. There, the sphenoid sinus also here. Can you see? That's the sphenoid ostea there. Yes, sir. But it's very hard here. Very hard bone there. Okay. 75 years, huh? 75 years old. <laughs> so my, my endos good looking endoscope holder is saying the patient is old. That's why. <laughs> sir, can, uh, can we reconfirm it uh, going medially to the middle turbinate? Oh, sure. Please celebrate. Yes. So the oh. gate number four, to find, to make sure you're in the posterior adenoids, you just go medial to the middle turbinate. If you go medial here, yes, you find your superior uh -huh. turbinate. If you find yes, your superior sir. turbinate and you go middle, you find the sphenoid ostea. Yeah, Can it just cleans. Yes. There's a sphenoid yeah. ostea there. So if you see the superior turbinate, you have to be in the posterior adenoid. And the sphenoid opening, you just go down, medial, and you're in the sphenoid opening. There's just a sphenoid opening here. I think we can see a little bit of bleeding, the feel of the tissue, it looks, it looks fresh. La. But I think we don't have to transfuse blood yet. La. <laughs> so now, I'm going to remove the mucosa because it's, like I said, it's kind of a dissection. So right. what you want to do, you want to remove the mucosa of the skull base. That's the skull base up there. Okay, so if I remove the mucosa, so that we can see the skull base, you got to keep right there, guys. Okay, wait, little, I, I use for the other side. So now you can see the periorbita. You can see the lamina papricea, you can see the orbit. So now let me dissect the skull base. I'm remove the mucosa of the skull base. And I can see the anterior model artery coming into view. Can you guys see that? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So that's the anterior model artery coming into view. So how many instruments have we done you so far? Three? Blake's Lee. Yes. Two. Okay. There. That's the entire model artery coming into view. Can you guys see that? Guys see that? The same way, let me remove all this bone. That might be the posterior model artery. Anterior might be here. Blake's Lee again. That's just that's see now I'm gonna put the scope. This is scope on the top of the nostril. Can you see? Right? I'm going to put the scope on the floor of the nose and look up. And that will take us to the frontal. That's frontal. So the same way right. now. Right. So most of the time I do my frontal with zero degree scope on the floor. Why? Because I'm a lazy surgeon, as I told you. And you get a good view. 
by just putting it on the floor. I'm just going to remove mucosa because of the because of the cadaveric dissection. Okay, there. Can you guys see that? So yeah, that's your yes, yes, frontal sir. recess up there. Yes, sir. And that's the anterior model artery up there. It's not as clear as that's the anterior model artery here. It's in the skull base. Can you see? Can you show with the instrument, sir, the anterior model? It's on the. It's see, it is here. It's inside this. There. Yes, sir. Okay, so it's yeah. not on yeah. a mesentery. Yes, sir. And there's the frontal recess, and there's the frontal up there. Yeah. All this is with a zero degree scope. This is a posterior admoidal artery here in the nerve. This might be middle. So anterior, middle, posterior, or oh, onodi cell. That's an onodi cell. Yes, sir. Yes. Is your IGS working, guys? So if the IGS doesn't work, you use the IGS in your head that you're born with. Okay? So, so is that sphenoid or onodi? This cannot be sphenoid because it's a, yeah. it's a horizontal shelf. When you have a horizontal shelf, it has to be an onodi. And this is your opening of your sphenoid. Can you see? Okay, so this is a classical onodi cell. Case and punch? Clear, guys? Clear? Okay, so now I'm going to remove the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus so that we can look into the sphenoid sinus itself. So let's look in the sphenoid sinus. You guys, paraclival carotid, agree? And yes, optical sir. carotid. We can recess. see yeah. yes. So now that we have got this elevator again, the there. So this periorbital, anterior admoidal artery. It's not clear. Let me just clean it one more time. Yeah. Tell me if it's not clear, and tell me if you need anything you want to clarify before I move on. Sorry. You want bottle? You want bottle? I must follow what they say. They're going to drive me back. Otherwise, they'll make me walk back. Okay. So we'll. That's your anterior admoidal artery. Can you see? Always yes, goes yes, hmm. anteromedial. Okay. Right. Middle admoidal vessel. Yes, sir. Posterior admoidal vessel. Yes. Optic nerve in an onodi cell because there's a. Yes, sir. Horizontal shell. Spinal sinus. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an orbital decompression. How many instruments did we use so far? Four. Three. So now we remove all the bone. That's your orbit. Can you see? So to do an orbital decompression, yes, use sir. a freeze elevator, dissect, and remove the bone. Uh, can one of you help me to hold the head of my head? You all had chapati just now, right? Strong, right? No? You didn't chapati. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have lunch yet. You see how hard working he is? Still haven't had lunch. Let's give him a big round of applause. What, what's your name, huh? Sashi Kumar. Okay. I'll give you extra tea tonight, okay? So here, <laughs> you can see how I'm dissecting the middle at model vessel. And yes, that sir. is the yes, anterior sir. admoidal artery. Yes. See whether I can click there. That's your artery. Got it? Right, sir. Right. Yes. The same way now, I'm going to go and dissect the orbit. That's the orbit being dissected away. Yes. Okay. So the same way now, can I have a cure? We're going to do an optic nerve decompression. So to do an optic nerve decompression, what do you need to do? Put your cu your curette into this board and then follow it backwards. Can you see? There. Optic nerve decompression done. Keep surgery. Simple. Life is complicated enough. Especially when the income tax or your IRB sends you a letter. So keep surgery simple. Do and decompression until you are able to see decompress all the way up to optical cavitical recess. Can you see, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. We can now, see. Yes. 
Sickle knife now. The same way, when you do this, make sure you stay away from your scope because it's very easy to accidentally injure your scope, okay? So what we're going to do now, I want to show you, this is a ligament of zinc here, okay? So I'm going to cut the perineural sheet. So you need to cut quite a lot before you can see the nerve. There, see? You're not, you're not seeing the nerve yet. There, that's the nerve. Oh, blood. Can you see? Can you see how much you need to cut before you can see the nerve? Clear, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. to injure the optic nerve is not easy. You see how much you need to cut? Yes, sir. Okay, now, I'm going to open up the periorbiter. So I'm going to cut this, my normal lazy way. My, we'll, we'll name this flap after Shashikuma. Shashikuma's flap. Okay. <laughs> so now we are, we have removed the, next thing. We have removed the periorbital over the orbit. Sir, are you using navigation? Because it's it is working, connected, okay? sir. The, the navigation is not, they tried three times, but yes, because sir. of the skin is too thick, it's not connecting. Yes, sir. Yeah. So maybe we can try it for the posterior scar. They, they tried a few times just now. Sickle knife. You can try again if you want. I've got no problem. So now, I'm going to open the middle vexus muscle. So you will see the dissection I'm doing is exactly like the surgeries I showed you. That's the muscle. Can you guys see that? Yes, sir. You can see. Yeah. That's the middle axis muscle. So now let's go to the superior border. And it, this is the inferior border of the muscle. There. Yeah, we can see the uh, belly of the muscle. Okay. Clearly. So now I am going to dissect above extra coronally. So if you have extra coronal, what you need to do is to go above. And you can actually go all the way and remove extra coronal lesion. Yes, sir. Okay. Middle rectus, superior oblique. That's the junction between middle rectus and superior oblique. Yes, right? sir. It's quite clear, sir. Yeah. And, this yes. is, and this is where you enter to do intracoronal tumor. There, beautiful. Can you see? Yeah, yes. Sir. There? Superior oblique, middle rectus, and that's the junction there. Yes, yes sir. Okay? Clear, sir. clear. The same way you can go above. Go extra coronally up to 12 o'clock. When I do this, look at your anterior model artery. It just gets pulled. Does it get snapped? No. It goes between the superior oblique and middle rectus. Yes, sir. So it is quite difficult to, in to injure the artery unless you use a biting forcep when you bite this. Right, sir. Can you see how mm. the artery is just scratching? Yes, the yes. same oh. way you can see the, the middle rectus. I need to remove this bone a little bit more. Yes, correct, yes. You can see how the middle rectus and the posterior, ad, sorry, the middle admoid and the posterior admoids are also getting pulled. Can you see that? Yes, sir. It is clear. Okay, good. The next step is. What shall we do? Intracoronal. Can you show us the uh, inferior rectus, sir? Inferior rectus will be underneath here. We'll remove this. La. Yes, sir. Yeah. To, to inferior, inferior rectus, can if you want to. We aim to please. Next slide. Yeah, after this. La. Yes, sir. He wanted the, the, the chairman wanted the inferior rectus. He might not give me my certificate, so I better show him the <laughs> inferior rectus. In the infraorbital, if it is. Yes, we will. We will. Uh, but that's yeah. for foster, I know. Yes. Sir. Step by step, of course. Layer by layer, we do the dissection. <laughs> yes. Okay, see there. That's the floor. Can you see? Okay. Q1. Okay, so you can hold the eight, guys. Actually, you haven't eaten yet, right? So better ask someone else to hold the eight. You're, you're strong enough? Okay, so let me remove the bone down there. Okay, yes, there. Yes, the yes, floor is yes, open. Sir. This is your inferior vectors. Okay? Yes, sir. Clear. Thank you. So now I get my certificate, huh? 
for dissection. <laughs> that's the sickle knife here I'm going to open. And that's your inferior rectus muscle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go between the inferior rectus there. Can yes, you see? Sir. Yes, sir. Middle rectus, inferior rectus. I'm going to go in between, lift up the middle rectus muscle. Yeah. And sometimes you're lucky, that's the oculomotor nerve. Yes, sir. Mm. Sorry? Uh, inferior oblique, oblique. In, hey, sorry, rectus. Oblique is much rectus. lower. Oblique comes up. So the other side. Superior oblique is here. You won't see the inferior oblique. There. Can you see? Yes, sir. That's the oculomotor nerve. Yes. These branches here. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw this, I asked my colleagues, is this the oculomotor nerve? They told me, the, my eye colleagues told me, we've never seen the eyes like this before. So, but it has to be there. there. Can you see? Yes, Oculo sir. Oculomotor nerve. So now, hockey stick, push it up, dissect inside optic nerve. Yes, sir. There. This is exactly what you showed in the video, sir. Can you see, guys? Uh, yeah. Lifting the muscle and then going. Optic nerve. Yeah. See, close to the optic nerve. So yes, what sir. I'm trying to tell you is that the dissection you do must be exactly like surgery. Right? Then only it becomes a practice of thickness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Clear, Clear so please. Orbit done. Now we go on to infra temple force die. Yes, sir. Is that okay? Sickle knife? Please, see this? Am I going too fast? No, right? The faster I do, the faster is the banquet, no? Sir. Excuse me, sir. Ah, later. Yes. Step by step, step by step. There's a, there's a method in my in the dissection that I do. Sir, can we go between the middle terminate and the septum to open the spinner sinus? Can, but you see the thing is, uh, I want to do the coronal cut first before I go to the to the sagittal cut. The, the problem we have is the previous previous uh, rhinoplasty. Okay. So, this, so this might not be a good video for us to upload into YouTube because of the previous rhinoplasty. So I'm going to do... So let me do the coronal plane first. Then I'll do the sagittal plane. I won't take long for the coronal plane, don't worry. We're going to cut the inferior turbinate. Your scissors are just like my hospital one, huh? doesn't cut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come. No, it's okay, it's okay. Don't worry, I'm just joking. So now give me a black sleeve. Yes. So I'm going to do a, the coronal plane before I do the sagittal plane. Okay? So once I do a sagittal plane, I don't want to come out of it because we're going to clivers, planum, and all that. There we go. So what you want to do next, I know this flap is always in the way. Okay, first elevator. So what you want to do next is to do a middle maxillectomy. So, so to do a middle maxillectomy, what you want to do is you want to go into the inferior matrix. Yes. And then dissect the whole thing laterally. This is your lacrimal sac. And duct. Yes, yes, sir. Give me a sickle there. So this is the lacrimal duct and sac. Can you see? So I'm going to open up and massipulize the duct so that you don't get epifolar. So the same way yes. now, now that I have gone into the middle inferior matrix and push the whole thing medially like this. Can you see this now? Maybe I should just remove this uh, septal flap, huh? That will be easier. So now I'm going to cut this, and there you go. You've got a middle maxillectomy. Can you see? Yes, sir. This is the easiest way to do a cutting or divider middle maxillectomy. Sir, is there any landmark where we should cut the inferior terminate? Uh, no, just make sure that you keep a little bit of the you know, of the posterior end so that you don't get bleeding. 
सर कैन यू जस्ट शो अस लिटिल लैंडमार्क्स फॉर द डेंकर्स लेट मी ओपन द मिरर नेक्स्ट लेट मी फर्स्ट लव गाइस स्टेप बाय स्टेप कैन ओके थैंक यू लेट मी डू स्टेप बाय स्टेप कैन आई वुड इवन ओपन द मैक्स लाइक गोइंग टू डेंकर्स टू मी दी ओके लेट मी ओपन दिस ओके यस Yes, sir. There. Let's remove all this. So, with this now, your middle maxillectomy is done. Correct? Fine, sir. Okay, good. So you see how fast we can do middle maxillectomy this way. Okay. After you've done that, you want to remove and make your maxilla opening bigger. Okay. And then make sure you massipulize the nasolacrimal duct. There. Yes, sir. Okay. Once you have done that, you want to pull off the mucosa of the maxilla. We got a lot of stuff inside here. Huh? Any suction test? Uh, suction is done. You know suction? Mm. Oh, you know, you give me a second suction separately. Mm. And give me a black slate, well. So now I'm going to remove the mucosa. Of the posterior wall of maxilla. Okay, can you see, guys? The entire mucosa is coming out. That is the floor of the orbit that I removed just now. The mucosa is coming out, so you can see the posterior wall of the maxilla. Yes, sir. It is clear. Clear, right, guys? Yes, yes, sir. Can yes. you see how thick the mucosa is? Yeah. Yeah. You are so, almost stripped off the uh, yeah. this thing, maxillary mucosa. So you won't get mucosa so thick in a yes, fresh folded yes, cadaver. Yeah. This is because it's a uh, soft embalming, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Anything not clear? You ask me, yeah. But let's do the dissection step by step because then, then it becomes clear. If I start jumping, then it the the dissection won't be clear. Okay. Good. Yes. Sir. Once you have done this, now you can do dankers because you want to see extra space. Yes. The problem is the septum flap now. Ah, uh, you can remove it, sir. If it is coming in the way, you can yeah, but, just cut but it. But if I if I remove this, then I won't be able to do septal flap. <laughs> so I'm keeping it for septal flap, and so that I can show you how to go into the. See, there's a reason why I do it. Okay, sir. <laughs> patience, my son. Patience. Yes. So what we need to do now is to find the anterior wall of maxilla. Yes. Okay. But it's good for you to see me doing a difficult dissection. Then it'll be easy for you. Okay, please elevate her. Because you need a chisel and a hammer. You have, huh? Okay, good. So now I'm going to dissect the anterior wall of maxilla. Okay, guys, can you see? Yes. Sir. Yes. See the wall of maxilla. Yeah. You yes, can sir, dissect yes, sir. until yeah. infra yeah. orbital nerve. Yeah. There, that's the infra orbital nerve coming into view. Can yes, you see? sir. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Clear, so sir. Thank once you. you have done that, okay. I'm going to remove all this mucosa. Okay, mucosa. And if I go into this space here, the right. chisel, this becomes a pre-lacrimal approach. You know? So I'm going to remove the anterior part of the inferior turbinate. Right. Yeah, we remove a little bit of the of the septum, lah. Huh? It's it's keep coming in our way. Yeah. So now, can you see, guys? Yeah. Can I have a chisel? So when you do dankers, you must be subperiosteal. There. If you're not subperiosteal, you will have ala deformity. Bang, 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 bang. Hey, can someone hold the hit me? Shashi Kumar hasn't eaten chapati yet for lunch. Okay, good. Okay. The same way. Bang, bang. There you go. Bang bang. Yes. 
No, it doesn't matter. Does it make a difference? Well, orbit is so far away, no? Orbit is here. Okay, but the orbit is too far away. I mean, from my simple understanding, the orbit is just too far away. Okay. Yeah. is right. The bone is hard. He's 75 years old. Can we uh, see that again? Yeah. So you see, we haven't gone through yet. Bang. Bang. So always listen to what your assistants say. You're usually right. Correct, Sashi? Yes. <laughs> Bang. Bang. You see how hard the bone is for this, this, this gentleman? There, I'm in now. Okay. There. This is now Danker's procedure. So how do we care, take care of this uh, uh, lacrimal duct during Danker's? I show you. I'm just about to show you. Patience, my child. Patience. Yeah. <laughs> but I like your question. It shows that you are an experienced surgeon who's thinking. Good. That's your doubt, sir. Like, <laughs> like, like I said, it yes. shows that you're a surgeon who who's an experienced, who know exactly what's going on. Okay. Good. Can yeah. you see this? That's the anterior wall of maxilla. Yes, sir. Can you see the shape? So then, now, this is the pre lacrimal approach. Yeah. Correct? Yes, sir. Caesar. Thank you. Yes, so, sir. lacrimal duct, what you do is don't cut like this. Cut in an angle like this. So, when you cut in an angle, yes, sir, sir. you must mm. it straight away. Fine, sir. Okay. Yeah. And then give me a sequel knife. How much can you charge for lacrimal sack in India? You cannot charge for this. No extra fees for this. No. Okay. There. Multiplies the duct. Well, it will help if the sickle knife is a bit sharper, but never mind. It's multiplies. Yeah. It's, it's clear, sir. It's clear, quite it's clear, clear, right? Mm. Yes, sir. So now, mm. sometimes when you press the tear duct, there, tear is coming out. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yes, so sir. now that we have Clear, done that, Clear, guys? So now we have the entire lacrimal uh, maxillary floor looking at you. Question? So now I'm going to remove the mucosa of the, of the posterior maxillary wall. I can see the infraorbital nerve coming into view. Can you see? Yes, yes, sir. We can if you look see at the view, clear. you get. Yeah. So you get to see the entire uh -huh. anterolateral wall of the maxilla. Right, sir. With the dankers. Yes. Okay, now we have done that. Now, please elevator. We want to now look for the spinal palatine artery. And how sir, do you do that? Yep. Sir, can you point out infraorbital nerve? Oh, that, that, that. With a pointer. There. That's infraorbital nerve. This lecture. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm going to look for SPA. SPA is very straightforward. A vertical incision a few millimeters before the posterior attachment of the middle of the middle turbinate. Yes. Yeah. Go subperiosteal. Very important. Mm. If you go subperiosteal and you dissect, there's nothing there but the artery. There. Mm. That's SPA. Yes, sir. Do you guys see that? Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, so that's SPA. So now that we have done that, what we need to do is now, you can see the maxillary artery, infraorbital nerve. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Maxillary yeah. artery here. Yeah. So now we are going to go. Hey, you're right, Lashashi. Uncle is kissing <laughs> Pachi. It's a strong man. You sir, can you first? dissect that uh, infraorbital nerve? I and will, I'm... I will. Patient, my son. Who is this now? My child, patient. Layer by layer, step by step, let me open the maxilla, go to the infra temple fossa, then I find the infra orbital nerve for you. Can I? You guys are more impatient than my own children. Huh? This what is, you want this to is do? fifth instrument you're using, sir. Uh, punch. Yeah. Carisons. Yeah, I'm just using yes. punch. Yeah. Okay. 
So now, I am going to follow the SPA backwards Let's and open up the posterior wall of maxilla. Yes. There we go. Can you see? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, can you see the archery there? You know, yeah, you have, it's, it it's seals. A, yes, sir. Okay, there's the archery there. Can you see? Hmm. Okay, try some punch. Uh, is it coming? Oh, sorry, what am I saying? Uh, Chisel. Usually, the bone here is very thin, but this uncle's got very thick bone. Bang. My goodness. Bang, bang. <laughs> bang. 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 Have you seen such thick maxillary wall? Bang. It's common in India, right? Mm. What do you guys drink? Ajapur date, Jura roti. Roti. So, Java roti date. So, it's quite hard. So, you can. So, now I'm going to remove the bone here. Okay. Can you see? Yes, yes, yeah. sir. Literally. Yeah. So, do the dissection exactly like how you will do your. Surgeries, step mm. by step, layer by layer. Don't jump the sequence, then you will lose the track. It's like running a marathon. Run the first kilometer, second kilometer, third kilometer. Don't run straight away to the 11th kilometer. So yeah, now, are there any only landmarks in the posterior wall of uh, maxillary sinus? Then, now you can see the infraorbital nerve coming to view. Can you see? Yeah. yeah. Yes, so, so let's step by step. The body landmarks of the posterior wall. Uh, yes, sir. There's, there's no much landmark. It depends on uh, the what the, the it it, de uh, it depends on the how prominent the arteries are. All you can see is just the protrusion of the artery. There's no other landmark. Okay, so punch. You, you understand, right? Yeah. So so there's no other landmark there. Hmm. I'm going to now remove this bone. Okay. So this takes us to the lateral wall of the spinal sinus, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. yes, sir. So in this case, it's not going to be easy because his spinal sinus is not very well pneumatized. Mm. You understand? So now I'm going to go. I can already see the infraorbital nerve. Can you see? So now, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to go down and remove as far low as I can. Right, sir. That's the maxillary vein coming into view. Remember, uh, I think it was Santosh, was it? Oh, no. The first gentleman, Subramaniam. Eh? Yes. So he presented, remember, vascular plane first and then only nerves. Yeah. So there I'm showing you guys what they all showed you. I'm trying to reproduce in this gentleman. Okay. Can you see, guys? So you see how thick this bone is. Yes, sir. This is common in mm -hmm. India. Huh? Maybe it's the milk you guys drink. Huh? Your milk is very pure. I, I, I should buy some milk and go back. Our milk is always mixed with water. There you go. Can you see, guys? You need to go as slow as possible. Ah, lovely. Next uh, And I think give me a hook. A ball probe? Yeah. There you go. Okay, good. Happy guys? Okay. Yes. Sir. Punch. I want to show you the descending palatine vessels. Can you hold the head up. Huh? Usually you can just flick it. In this in this uncle is quite hard. Let's see again. There. So by removing this board. Now we can see the descending palatine. Next click. So now I'm going to remove, just one minute, let me remove all the bone spicules so that we have a much better view. We need to remove a bit more, like, guys. Okay, let's see. This goes out. There's a mucosa here, which I need to remove as well. See how thick the mucosa is. Chisel. This is the descending palatine. Can you see? Chisel. This one. There. So now I'm going to open the whole area if I can. Bang. Bang. 
usually with a flick of kerosene comes out. Bang, 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 bang. My hand, don't bang my hand, lah. I thought you like me. Bang, bang a bit more. See how hard the bone is. <laughs> Just. So now we need to see. Still got bone, yeah, my goodness. You all chose the thickest bone possible for me, lah. Nextly. <laughs> but good. See how we manage a difficult case. Then for you, it'll be easier. There. Sending Palatine. Guys, okay? Walk up, okay. This is your descending. Valentine vessel and the two nerves. Yes, and sir. the two nerves. Yeah. Can you see? Yes. That's the vessel, the two greater palatine and one lesser palatine. Mm. Can you see? Right. Okay. Now, mm. now I'm happy. Now we can open up the important person. You read my mind. So what you're gonna do now, you're gonna open up the fascia of the infant temple fossa. As you open up the fascia and the fat. The first thing that comes to you that. is the vein, the maxillary vein. Yeah. Then, and then you open the vein. Okay, vein or nerve? Yes, this is, this is the infraorbital nerve, which means the maxillary artery is much lower down. Can you see? This is your maxillary artery. Can you see how small it has become? Yeah? Such a small artery he's got. Why la? It's all shriveled. Okay? Okay. So this is the vein. So this is the maxillary artery here. Okay? For some reason, the artery is very small. So this is now the infraorbital nerve. Okay? So I'm going to follow the infraorbital nerve backwards. Wait, let me make sure that's the nerve. Something doesn't, the location is slightly out. Let me make sure it's the nerve. Let me make sure it's the nerve first. The, the location is slightly out. So it may be a fibrous cut, fibrous tissue. Let me open up, up a little bit more. And there you go. There. There. That's your nerve. Can you see, guys? That's your nerve. That's a scar tissue just now. And this is your artery. But your artery is very small. Huh? I'm going to cut the artery away. This is the infraorbital artery. Yes. That is the maxillary artery. This is the maxillary artery here. There. That's the maxillary artery. Can you see? Okay. Yes, sir. So now... So, the, so, so, so this is the right direction. The one just now, it didn't make sense to me because it's too, it's too low down. So now I'm going to dissect and follow the... See, this is what I meant. You always get variations in cadavers, you see? Right. Yeah. Follow the infraorbital nerve. So this is phenopalatine. The, yeah. the maxillary artery will give you descending palatine. Then only it becomes phenopalatine. So I'm going to dissect... The sphenopalatine away, and beautifully you can see the pterygopalatine ganglion. You can see the two nerves coming out from the infraorbital nerve? Correct, sir. Yes, sir. These two nerves here? Mm. That's your pterygopalatine ganglion. Can you see? The same yes, way sir. now, I'm going to dissect this and follow the V2 back. I said, let me remove this fascia. It's <laughs> supposed to cut, huh? not tear like that, but never mind. So now we are going to dissect and identify where V2 enters. And where does it enter? Foramen or tandem? No, no, rotundum, rotundum. Ovale is three. So now, go a bit closer. Yeah, we, we choose rotundum. That's your polymer with up here. 
I cut this a little bit more. There. Can you see? Yes, sir. That's your follow man thunder. Can you guys see that? Yeah, okay. it's clear. Clear, guys? So now that, let me dissect a little bit more here. And you can see the, the branches. Can you see this for Let me cut the spinal plantain artery. That's an artery, can you see? I'm going to clip, first clip, second clip, next clip. Push the artery down. Push the artery down the same way here. So now what we are going to do is we are going to look for Regent's nerve. So once we open up this plane, dissect a little bit more here, push up all the soft tissues, and that should take us to the Regent's nerve soon. Okay? Regent's nerve is always medial and inferior. So that should be somewhere here. This is your tiger palatine ganglion. Dissect the floor of the sphenoid sinus. And that's your readings now. Can you see? Yeah. Can you guys see? Yes, sir. Yes. So this is, you see the nerve that's coming. I think let's move this bone first. Next thing. Let's remove that bone. So now we did. Can you see, guys? Nice yes, to see. Yes. Median's nerve. So look at now the nerve that comes from median, median nerve. Now maybe it's better to see the foramen ovale medially. See again? Okay. Maybe it's easier for me to see the polymer ovale clearer. There. Polymer yes. ovale. Yeah, yes. Clear, guys? Clear, clear. Median nerve. Yes. Polymer ovale. Can you see how the nerve, how the nerve is going inside to form the polymer ovale? There, the V2. Can you see the V2 now? How the V2 is going inside to form the polymer ovale? There. It's V2, right? All agree? coming from the orbit, going inside, and entering the foramen ovale. Yes, you sir. Please see? Yes, sir. Clear. Foramen ovale, median's nerve. Correct? And here, you can see there are... What is it giving? Forceps to all of you. Huh? huh? We don't get anything. We don't get anything. <laughs> can you see the nerves coming out from the V2? Here? Yes, sir. And can you see the nerves coming out from the Vedian's nerve here? Yeah. This is your tarigo palatine ganglion. Okay? Yes, sir. As you can see. Okay. Okay. Any questions about this? Lexley? Guys, any questions about this? You all are too busy with your chocolate. Okay. <laughs> now, let's go to V3 now, okay? <laughs> so for V3, Remember, I was showing you the medial pterygoid plate here. This is your lateral pterygoid plate. Okay, I'm going to dissect the, the lateral pterygoid muscle from, that's your lateral pterygoid plate. Okay? So as I dissect the lateral pterygoid plate, and you will be able to see Foramen ovale. Hold on. That's foramen ovale. That's V3. Can you see? Yes. That's foramen ovale. And that's the posterior branch of V3 that goes between the two lateral heads of the pterygoid. You guys? Clear? Okay, good. Yes. Sir, can you divide that? Uh... 
tissues around those nerves and show the these nerves distinctly okay oh sorry that, that was for an overlay what did i say utanda okay so so this is utanda yeah so this is utanda can you see utanda or go medially median there utanda okay this is ovale did i say utanda accidentally yeah you don't give me chocolate of course la there that is ovale v3 ovale okay clear guys yes sir yes sir whatever flavor chocolate <laughs> after that it's a punch uh see guys so what i'm going to do now uh sorry uh just uh, see unfortunately this bone is a very hard bone so i'm not sure whether i'll be able to show you my cross scale i'll try so this is v v2 correct beautiful otanda okay bang let's find bang bang okay bang bang ah good lovely i think we got it okay so we move the bone here so usually the bone here will be thin in the lateral recess in this case we don't have a lateral recess you understand guys so i'm going to remove the bone uh, here okay i'm going to remove the bone follow the v2 can you see that the v2 is being removed so this is v2 this is your maxillary strut here this is foramen otandum correct yes this sir. is the maxillary strut a uh, uh, ball probe before they ask me i better use the ball probe okay. this is your v2 all agree yes sir yes, sir. maxillary yes. strut yeah orbital fissure this is v1 clear sir clear. orbital fissure okay so now if we remove this bone usually it's not so hard okay bang hold the head up boy Oh, okay, beautiful. Wow, Shashi, I think you should be a sculptor, lah. Your chisel is very effective. Huh? Maybe you shouldn't eat lunch every day. You seem to be better without lunch. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so now let me remove this piece of bone. So always be careful, lah. You can easily, easily we can accidentally hit the sep the the scope. Yeah. So always be careful. There, beautiful. Please clap for Shashi. For, for wonderful sculpturing. Correct. Look so now. Can you see? I can. Can you see that? Foramen rotundum. Clear. Yes. Thanks. Let me start. Clear. Yeah. V one. Okay. V two. And if I remove this bone back, that's Michael's case. Chisel. This uncle is a tough guy, lah. Back, okay. Back. See, he's bleeding from cavernous sinus, guys. That's the cavernous sinus bleed. Back. Back, okay, okay. Back. 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 Okay, let's clap for for Shashi again for doing such a wonderful sculpturing job. So you can do part-time chiseling for the statues, I think. Okay. So now with this bone, Sasha, mm. we should be hard work, Karo. We should be able to see Michael Scale. Okay, sickle knife. Okay? Oh, yeah, sickle knife. So can you see now? We have followed V two. There, I'm lifting up Foreman Watandam from his canal. Okay. Yes. V one, V two, Michael's cave is behind here, and if I lift this up, V three. That's V three going into Foreman Ovale. Can you see, guys? Okay. Uh, bottle. Yeah. 
let me lift up the whole milk. V1, V2. This is the V3 going downwards. There. Here. Yes, sir. That's Foloman Ovale. See? My entire probe was gone to Foloman Ovale. Sequel face elevator. Remember how we came just now? We went between the two pterygoids. Where is the V3 now? Ah, there. Remember we went between the lateral pterygoids? Okay. Here, remember? Okay, can you move the the ball pop? The ball pop? <coughs> can you see the movement there? That's the Foloman Ovale. So we just gone all the way. Oh, do we have time? I can chisel that for you. This just Shashi is such a good chiseler. You want to see the V3, right? Okay. You have to bang this. You bang? Okay. Bang? Okay. Bang. Yeah, I think you should clap for Shashi again. And one more time. Bang. And bang. I sure. Bang. Okay, beautiful. Now we should be able to see V3. There, V3 going down. Nextly? Yes, sir. Yes. So keep on chocolate for Shashi as well. Huh? Guys, can you see? Beautiful. V1, V2, V3 going to Foloman Ovale. Yeah? So the ball club, yes. They'll only be happy with the ball club, right? Yes, I remember. V1. V2, orbital fissure. Yes. Polymon was under. V3, polymon ovale. That's, you can see it going down into polymon ovale. Okay? That's Michael's kid section for you. Please clap for Shashi. And it's wonderful. Yeah. Isn't it? Thank you. So now we go into the coronal plane. Mm -hmm. Sickle line? Yes, sir. You guys okay? Any questions, sir? Usually you're one step ahead of me. No questions this time. <laughs> no. Okay. Now it is to... clear, sir. No questions. Okay, okay. So let me now go into the septal flat. So how do I do a septal flat? I do as usual my lazy man's way. Sir. I cut. Yeah. Sir, uh, middle target and lateral target. Sorry? Middle oh, target. I showed you just now. This is lateral pterygoid, no? Remember I was telling you just now that this is the lateral pterygoid. The lateral pterygoid muscles are coming. There, this one. Okay. This is lateral pterygoid. <laughs> okay. This is middle pterygoid. Here. Medial. Can't appreciate. Lateral. This is lateral. Okay. This is medium. Okay. Okay. Got it? Sir, this, till, uh, how long you drill out that uh, wedge in angiofibroma? There? So this is... Okay. So if you want a better one, let me see. I go in front here a bit. Maybe it's easier for you to appreciate. Okay. This is better. Medial pterygoid. Lateral pterygoid. This is a pterygoid wedge. Sir, in angiofibroma, till what level you would drill out, sir? You don't have to drill. Just follow the tumor. Remember oh. I was telling you, just follow the tumor. Okay. You hold the tumor, pull, okay. dissect around it. You don't have to drill anything. Okay. Huh? Keep life simple, like guys. So now, you are just going to be very complicated. Like the it's very interesting, sir. Huh? You know? And uh, quite Sub clear, nobody is sleeping post -pandial. That's because of the chocolate, I think. No, no, because of your uh, <laughs> clear demonstration. Chocolate has just, uh, just now it has come. I'm going to remove the, uh, I'm going to remove part of the septum, septal flat. Okay, to this is the septum, huh? the one that's already been used for the the septal, this one, right? So I'm just going to remove all this so that it doesn't come in your way. Okay, after doing this, could you let me see this? Okay. What you want to do, this is the, the mucopericondyl flap. Can you see? Face elevator? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Face elevator? So usually in real life, the micro-pernicular flap is very easy to elevate. 
in a cadaver, it's very difficult because the flap is, 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 it tends to be very thin. And I think they've also done some amount of septoplasty, is it? Huh? Okay. So it's a bit difficult to raise the flap because septoplasty has been done as well. Okay, so there. All I want to do is to be able to identify the keel. So now, okay, that's the keel, guys. Can you see? That's the keel on the right side, and this is the keel on the left side. Clear? Yes, is this? So a septal flat, I usually do like a septoplasty, and then I cut it in the midline of the middle turbinate. And as you cut, you push it down so that your lower flap goes just below the sphenoid posterior. And the same way, this flap goes along the posterior corona. Okay? Subtle flap done. So to make things easier now, I'm going to cut the middle turbinate so that you have a middle turbinate flap as well. So now you have a septal flap and a middle turbinate flap. Okay, guys? No. Oops, sorry. What is, what is this now? Huh? Oh, the suture came on, isn't it? Column and suture. Yes. Sickle, eh? Right, the whole flap is gone. Yeah. Am I divided? So, so this is the septal flap on the opposite side. So I'm just going to remove the flap so that we can uh, have four header techniques. Okay, guys? The divider is fasting, is it? No. Is this? Is this? Is this? Is this? Okay, let's cut this flap. Okay. So what? You're not audible, sir. So what you're doing? Yeah, that is, uh, I, I feel, it. is it the rostrum, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Sir, before taking out the septum, can you show us uh, Lothrop? Okay. Do you, you have a frontal set? Uh, uh, only, only giraffe. Not going to be enough. But anyway, we'll do. Very, 
Let me do, let me do scalpations. We don't have a frontal set, only, we only have a giraffe. So we don't have a hostman and a cobra. But let me do skull base first, then I'll do, I'll do frontal for you guys. Is that okay? This is not sphenoid, by the way. Huh? This, see, this is sphenoid. This is not sphenoid yet. There's a septa in between. Yes, It'll be nice yes. if you have an IGS. An IGS will, show, will have showed all this very nicely. So you see, the problem is this. Can you see? Yes. So, so, so yes. this is what's making it difficult for us to operate. Case and punch. So now let's open this a large air cell occluding the spinot sinus. So now I'm going to open the large air cell so that you can see the sphenoid sinus. Okay? Yes, sir. So if you so this can be quite confusing thinking that you're on a sphenoid sinus. Actually, you're not. Can you see? Because the spinoid is at the back. The spinoid is at the back. Can you see? It's a large air cell that is coming all the way to the atmoids. See? So a sphenoid will show you OCR. You can't see an OCR. So the OCR is behind this. You understand, right? Yeah. So this is interesting, very interesting. It would have been very nice to have, to have a IGS for this. It would have... It will show us the anatomy very nicely, but it's okay. We, we manage. We always do. So I need to see the OCR on the other side for me to complete my surgery. So I've removed the anterior shell. Okay. That is optic nerve. Maybe. Yes. No. Not sure. Okay. Uh, okay. You buy it again? We need more space on this side. So we have an unusual sphenoid sinus, which is good. Okay. It makes the dissection a bit more complicated and difficult. Okay, sir. Oh, we have a solid bone behind here, guys. I don't I think we are going to have a bit of difficulty now. Because this bone is solid. Can you see? Yes, There's sir. no space. Yes, okay, now yes. my, so what will I do in real life if I have this? I'll just drill. So let's assume I, I have to do a skull base space for this guy. What will I do? Okay. This, this is what I would do. Okay. Uh, you understand what I'm trying to say, right? Optic nerve is that. Sorry, before that. Can I have a... Let me open up the entire sphenoid first. There. Divider again. Okay. There you go, guys. Better. Right? Now we are in cellar. That's cellar. Yes, sir. So can you see? This is the bone I removed. This whole thing was a air cell from the atmoid going backwards. Okay, sir. You got it? Huh? It's a, this whole thing was an air cell going backwards. This is sphenoid all the way. Look at this. Right, sir. So this is an air cell from the atmoid going backwards. Okay. So see the OCR here? Hey, a block, guys. And OCR is on top there. This is another onodi cell. Yes, sir. So you have a bilateral onodi cell. No, this How did they pick up such a lovely case like this? Please clap for Shashi and Madam Professor Lakpa. See, you have a bilateral onodi cell. Okay, next thing. So can you see what I meant? Look at this. Look at that. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. OCR on both sides, divide again. Come on. Mate, uh, can punch. Uh, sorry, Chisa, Chisa. Apologies. So before we start skull base, optic nerve, optic nerve, carotid artery, carotid artery. This is the abnormal cell I was telling you about. Yes, sir. This is the pituitary yeah. gland. So this yeah. is planum. Yeah. Cella. Paraclival carotid. This paraclival cavity is missing. You can't see. Right. Because of the thick bone you have. It yeah. must be somewhere here. You, you understand? 
So, and that is Clivus. So now what we are going to do is we are going to open, what's it? Clivus. That's the superior intercounter science sinus. This is the superior intercounter science sinus. This one here. It's unlikely, most likely it's here. Because if your optic nerve is here, carotid artery is here, but the flower clouds most likely is here. You, you understand, right? Okay. Anyway, let's open up. Bang. Slowly, yeah. Huh? Don't bang my hand, huh? No. Your friends, right? Okay. No, huh? Bang. Bang. Okay, good. Bang. You see how hard it is? Yeah. Yes, sir. Bang. This is made in India, a lot of them. Such a thick bone. Bang. Bang. Okay. Both of But we have a master crafter in Chashikuma. So we should be okay. Cure it. I think better use the cure it. So I'm just going to remove this bone. Okay. Cure it. That's fine. Let's go. Aye. I just need some space. So remember, careful of the scope, ah. Uh. Yes, sir. Okay, guys, and punch. Enough space, I think. We'll find out soon. How are we for time? Are we okay for time? We started we started at 2.20, 2.30 just now. Or you okay? Yeah. yeah. Not time for, for gala dinner yet? No chat. Yeah. No chat. We have time, okay. So Shashi you have to wait for food a bit longer, huh? Okay. Pretty too glad. Can you see? Yes, sir. So now. I'm going to open the planum. So most of the time, planum, you can just flick it like this. Can you have a divider for a while, guys? Uh, can you give me a divider for a while? Uh, divider is working? Yeah, give me a divider. Yeah. Let me just remove this. Hmm. Okay, that's it. Okay, hmm. now... I'm going to remove the bone. Most of the time, the dura will be very thin in a cadaver. It's not a tough mother in a cadaver, okay? So let's see whether we are able. So now, I'm coming to the carotid artery region. Can you see? Yes. Sir. So I'm going to flick it to the carotid artery region and see whether I can just loosen all this bone or not. Remember when you do this, Put your scope away, yeah? So sometimes you cut, sometimes you flick, sometimes you just have to see which one becomes loose. Right. That's the optical characteristic of the cell. So how many instruments have we used so far? Five. Five, yes. Five is a good number, no? Punch, right? Five? Yeah. Eight, Five. do, t, yeah. cha, punch. Okay. Cha, punch. Yeah. I can never remember four. Oh, huh? sorry? <laughs> which is it? Oh, Shashi is six, number six. six. So now you see, we're coming to planum. So that is trans planum. So even in, in back home, when I do skull this, I do the same. I drill a little bit, find an opening, and then use a casting punch. Simply because drills are very precious for us. I work in a government institution. We don't have the money that you guys have. <laughs> I thought some of you own private hospitals all here. So, so, so what you do is do the same as I do then, yeah? Okay. Hmm. So what we need to do now is see whether I can just flick, flick the bone. Beautiful. Can you see guys? You see how the, the bone comes out? And flick the bone and flick the bone. You see, I keep my scope very far so that I don't hit the scope. How much is one scope in India? 
two lakhs. How much is that in US dollars? If you count to Malaysian ringgit, it's cheaper. I'll buy one and bring back home. Ours is around eighteen thousand ringgit one scope, a stores and a scope. So one long movement. See, if you accidentally bang like that, your scope is gone. Yes. So when you do this, always keep your scope far away. Right. Okay. Very very important. Yeah, I've seen it happening in enough dissection, even by the world's best people. In life dissections, everywhere. It has happened to me once before with a with a old scope. Because although I was here as a pulling out, the bone became loose. The bone came and hit my scope. All right. So it can happen to 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 even to the experienced surgeons as well. And I've seen the in life dissection where as they move this backwards, it hits the scope straight, and that goes. Two lakhs, is it? Okay. Sure. So I'm going to go now. Mm. Okay, beautiful. Guys, can you see? Optic nerve exposed here. So I'm now going to use, expose the optic nerve on this side as well. And I'm going to expose the carotid artery on this side as well. Can you see? So now we come to paraclival carotid. So you see where carotid artery is here. Huh? Good. I think we should be okay. Is that enough for cavernous sinus here? Yes, it's enough for cavernous sinus here. And this is the optical carotid. Okay. Give me a black for that. Let's take out all the bone pieces. Just give me one minute, guys. I'll just take out all the bone pieces before we open up. Yeah. Okay. And now remove all the bone. Okay. Now you can see planum very nicely. Okay, sickle neck. So now let's look at the skull base now. Yes. Before we open. So here now we have trans planum, tubercle, cella, clivus, optic nerve, carotid artery, optic nerve, carotid artery. Is it clear on the screen? Yes, yes sir. Now, for pituitary surgery, the four blues, the superior intercavernous sinus sinus, the inferior intercavernous sinus sinus, cavernous right. sinus, cavernous sinus, the four blues, okay? So if you have a pituitary tumor, all you need to do is to cut the fold of dura. Mm. Expose the tumor. Yes, sir. Give me a black sleep. Give me suction after this. Huh? And then remove, remove the tumor. Okay, suction. That's, that's for biopsy. And then you take a suction and then you remove the remaining tumor until all the tumor is gone. Okay. Tumor out. Okay? Thanks. Now we go on to supercellar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to separate the pituitary gland from the carotid artery. So as I do this, that's a superior hypervisual vessel. Beautiful. Can you see? Yeah, nice, sir. Yes. Then, Very nice. This one there? Yes, sir. This is artery, carotid artery there? Superior hypervisual artery. Thanks. Nice, right? Yes, sir. So please clap for Shashi again. Next, please. Yeah, everyone's clapping for you, Shashi. No one's clapping for me. <laughs> now let's now take out this mucosa, this dura. I think there's, there's a stuff inside here. Mm. That's fine, that's fine. Don't worry about it. We'll just continue. So here, the same way, there's a superior hypofacial. Down here will be the inferior hypofacial. 
So now I want to cut the plane between the pituitary gland and the carotid artery on this side. Okay? Yes, sir. But Oh, no, no. In real life, you never do that. This is only for dissection. Okay. So now, if you do this, you're pulling up, you're doing a pituitary translocation. That's your inferior hypofacial artery here. Yes, sir. Clear. Okay? So yes. now, this is the upper third of clival or clinoid. Okay. Right. Now, I'm going to open supracellar. Transplanum. Right. Yeah. Yes. I can see the optic nerve, optic, optic nerve coming into view. Okay. See, do not matter how tough it is. Yes, sir. Okay, that's the optic nerve. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. And as yes, I yes, cut yeah. here, you can see the ophthalmic artery. Where is the ophthalmic artery? It will be just here. There. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Can you Thank see? You. Thank you, sir. Ophthalmic artery. Okay. Very clear. Sir. The same way we're going to cut here now. And I'm going to cut along here. Your sickle knife is as sharp as mine at home. Okay. And optic artery. Yes, sir. Clear, clear. Hold on, eh? Can you see? There, guys, can you see? Yes, sir. Optic artery. Now. Fine, sir. Having done that, I can already see the ACA. Okay, so before. Okay, so now what you're gonna do now, we're gonna remove the arachnoid along the nerve, the optic nerve. Put it to his stock. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Beautiful, sir. Okay. Put it very, very stock at the back. Yeah, yeah. very Which nice. Uh, can I have a two cutting? <laughs> Finally, I get one. Shashi has been getting everything. Two cutting. <laughs> we will share the chocolate, right, Shashi? Yeah? Okay. Sorry, what's your name? Huh? Can you please clap for him as well? I think he deserves a clap as well. <laughs> Blue button, right? Okay. Oh, you're, you're OT star? Hey, very good. Huh? You're obviously very experienced. Very, well done. Oh, I see. The last time I was here, when I did, when I did the sphenoid fungus. Yeah, okay. I thought you looked familiar. You were with Shanu, right? Okay, perfect. Good, good to see you again. Okay, sickle knife. So now you can see we are now able to look at the ACA. You see, guys? That's yes, the sir. ACA. Yeah, yes. Wow, oh, beautiful. Intercommunicating. There. Right yeah. ACA, yes, left sir. ACA, intercommunicating. Very nice. And this is the heart of yes, human. Yes. Beautifully seen. Can you see, guys? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Heart of human. Right ACA, left ACA, heart of human. Right, sir. Now, if we go between these two, get, yes. Uh, Take out all, all the CSF leak. Yes, close it again. These are all the arachnoids membrane. This is the membrane of Liliquis. Okay. Yes, sir. Membrane of Liliquis. You know Gulliver's travel? Lilliput and ah, membrane of Liliquis. This, if you remove this, you can see the basal artery down there. The membrane there, there, basal artery. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can you see, guys? Yeah. Thank you. Can you put it in? Yeah, let me try it. Again. Might be easier. Yes. Uh, I couldn't have spoke for a while. Okay, so now you can see the branch here. Membrane of Liliquis. I open this up. Basal artery. Basal artery, posterior cerebral. Yes. Superior cerebellar, third right. cranial nerve. So this is the membrane of Liliquis. Can you see? Beautifully seen here. Yes. Okay, so once we have done that, Sometimes you can lift up this whole thing. So this is optic 
right optic, left optic, chiasma, pituitary yes, stop. Yes, you follow this back, this becomes optic track. Yes, you lift this up, optic variation. Yes, well done. Beautiful. You guys? Miss Lachri. Okay. Now you have removed the tumor, correct? Can you cut this for me, a small tiny piece? Can you cut this for me? So how do we reconstruct now? Surgery done. Time to go home. Boys waiting for pizza. It's too big. Ah, smaller, smaller, smaller. So how do you read? So you take a piece of fat. Piece of fat. Oh, it is better. Thank you. Give me that. Remember, I was telling me do your dissection like how we do a real surgery. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. So we've got an artificial dura of fat. So. Tuck it exactly along the edges of the jiva. Mm -hmm. Where's our septal flap? Our flap is a bit small though, thanks to the previous workshop. But I don't know whether the septal flap will be big enough or not. What do you think, Shashi? Uh, Shashi? Big enough? Is enough? Yeah, yes. Okay. One more clap for Shashi. And what's your name? Group. Gulbaya. There you go. Reconstruction done. Okay? Yes. Now we go on to transclival and then I'll do a lot for you guys. Then you can have coffee if you want. Uh, okay. Any question, guys? Sick on Come. We have time, right? How many instruments have we used so far? Five. Still five. Okay. Uh, next thing, please. Now, transclival is going to be difficult in this patient. You know why? Because his bone is so thick. It's okay. We have Shashi Kumar. Uh, okay. Crescent punch. Can I have a chisel? You bang? Bang? Okay, good. Bang, bang. Okay, good. Bang. Yeah, bang. Smaller. Okay, good. So the reason why I'm using a chisel is because if I drill, you'll get bone everywhere. You understand? Yeah. So if you have bone everywhere, then the anatomy is not clear. So in real life, I will drill a little bit. Bang. Expose the dura, and then I use skeleton punch. So the reason why I'm using only a chisel here is so that I can preserve the anatomy for you. If I use a, a, a drill, the bone dust will go everywhere. Bang. Thank you. Okay. What is this? Carotid artery. Back. That's a proper yes. carotid carotid. Yes. So now I got a space. We will remove. Beautiful. Shashi, clap for him again. Yeah, nice. Sir. Very, very nice. So now we are going to remove this is the lower uh -huh. part of the planoid of the cellar. Okay? So now that's the carotid artery there. Can you guys see that? So now climb uh still again. So you get paraclival on both sides. Can you see? Back. Back. Okay. Suction first. Can you give me the bigger uh, chisel? The bigger chisel, yeah. Suction. Mm -hmm. All we need is one small space. Then I can use my chisel punch. Chisel again, the, the big one just now. This this space is too big for a small chisel. Okay, bang. Okay, bang. Good, bang. Bang. Okay, 
Did the whole thing go in? Okay. Takshana. Takshana. So once you have made a hole in the clivus, okay, cuvette. We'll use a cuvette and just flip it, flick it. Guys, can you see? That's the dula of the clival at the back. Okay, suction again. I'm going to cure it again now. We cannot use the one yet. Okay. Can you see? Oh, yes. this is what yes. I do in real life as well. I just drill. This is your clival plexus. Yes, sir. Can you punch? Okay. Now I'm going to remove the bone. See, all I need is one small space where the dura is open. And once that is done, I can flick the whole board. Can you see, guys? Suction yes, again? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's see now. Let's try first. Can you see, guys? Okay. Can you punch again? This gentleman has got a lot of CSF, huh? It's like real life so dissection, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm going lateral, the same way I'm going lateral here as well. Can you see, guys? Yes. Yes, sir. We it's, can see it It's to accommodate my, my hand movement. So you see, I'm, I'm going laterally like this. Okay, good. So when you open the dura, you go back to normal. Okay. We are all along the floor. So this is a difficult transclival because the space is very small and the bone is thin. Okay? But you see a difficult one being done, then the rest will be easy for you. Okay. Shall we open the clivers now? That's the view of the clivers. Can you see? Okay. First of all, we, uh, uh, we take off the reconstruction first. Huh? Where is the leg sleep? We take off the reconstruction first. Sickle knife. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the entire clivus. The dual of the clivus and open it up all the way to the top. Push the pituitary gland and that's transclival. Can you punch? Get a 30 degree scope video. Yeah? So when you do a transclival, what do you see? Mr. B. In India, Mr. B is Amitabh Bachchan, right? Yeah. For us, Mr. B is basilar artery. There. Can you see, guys? Clean again. So the problem we have is every time we introduce a scope, we hit the, the, the septum... The septum thing that they did before, the ala cartilage and all that, no? So that's why we have a bit of a, we have to maneuver our way in whenever we go into, so that we don't get it smudged. Okay, good. That should be good enough. At least we can see one side. Yes, sir. Sickle knife. I need a, a 30 degree scope after this, huh? And a ball cloak. So what we're going to do now, okay, so now we are going to see okay, good. Yeah. Basilar archway. Can you see guys? Yes, yes, yeah, we can see clearly. Okay. Posterior cerebral left, posterior cerebral right, superior cerebellar left, superior cerebellar right, right. third cranial nerve. Okay, 
So the third cranial nerve, mammillary bodies, yes, sir. hypothalamus, yes. and third ventricle. Yes. Yep. Third ventricle, and you can see your hypothalamus colloid. Very plexus. nice. Thank you, sir. The guys? Go colloid ahead. plexus. Yes. Yeah. Beautifully seen. Very, very nice. Down here at six o'clock is aqueduct of Sylvius. Yes, sir. Okay. Up there is the foramen of Monroe on right and left. And aqueduct of Sylvius going into the fourth ventricle here. Can you see? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, put it back. Remember, do everything like how we do a surgery. Yeah? Don't destroy anything. Now, I'm going to dissect and identify the third cranial nerve. Now, we need to identify the sixth cranial nerve. Where is the six? There, down here. That is six. So, we have a small problem. There's too much of liquid. Yeah, yeah. 30 degrees scope after this, huh? We need 30 degrees scope after this. 30 degrees scope. Let me remove all the liquid. I can see the fifth nerve coming into view. Face and punch again. Let us enlarge the opening a little bit more. Sideways. Only the dura. And bite only the dura. There, can you see, guys? The third nerve going into the orbital fissure, I think. The third nerve there. Can you see? Going to orbital fissure. Can you see? This is orbital fissure. All right. And now I'm going to bite this a little bit more. And bite this a little bit more. And bite this a little bit more. Okay, let's get a 30 degree scope now. Uh, uh, see, stuck to the dura. Okay, that. So do the dissection exactly like how we do in real life surgery. And you can see how I've preserved everything. Yes, sir. So do it exactly like that when Thanks. you do the dissection. Hey, you guys, it's not clear like a 30 degree scope. Can you increase the light maximum then? Okay, guys, ball flow. Let's hope for the best. So this now is third ventricle, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. With a 30 degree scope, let's see whether yeah. you can see the foramen of Monroe. Ah, foramen of Monroe, left. Yes, sir. Yeah. Foramen nice. of Monroe, right. Okay. Please clap for Shashi again. There. Lateral recess, right. Lateral recess left. Very nice. Foramen of Monroe. That's the, I think it's the interpericulus. Ah, aqueduct yes, of Sylvius. Yes, fourth sir. ventricle. Can you guys see that? Are we supposed to smile? No. Oh, your, your husband, right? Oh, yeah. okay. Please clap one more time for your husband. <laughs> <laughs> How much he loves you? He hasn't had lunch, you know, poor thing. That was he's taking photos. That's why. <laughs> Okay. So she is there. Basilar artery, posterior cerebral, yes, sir. superior cerebellar, P1, third cranial nerve, yes, sir. going into the yeah, orbital yes, fissure. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So now we have to remove all this and let's see whether we can see the fifth cranial nerve. Yep. From here, you have to follow the third oculomotor nerve, somewhere here. So now, let's look for fifth. Fifth is the big filler. Yes, sir. It seems. Five. Yes, sir. Seven and eight. Let's see if we can seven and eight now. Are you mm. Six. That, that's six. That is the sixth one. It's too much Lower water. Down. Huh? <laughs> this is the problem with very good cadavers. It's too much of CSF. Okay, six now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remember Doelos Canal? This is Doelos Canal. Yeah. Where it enters the a petroclival ligament, that's Doelos Canal. Yes. Seven and eight. Right. What, 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 wait, let me click for you again.
Isn't this better than uh, a law chop? Seven and eight, down there, down there, guys. Yes. Can you see? Yeah. Down there, seven and eight. And now I'm going to rotate the scope. The brain is falling forward, you know, so that's, that's the problem we have now. The brain is falling forward, that's why you can't see properly. So now, let's see whether I'm able to see six. Yes. Nice, sir. And nine, 10, 11 will be down here. Uh, with the blood artery. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. What I would like to do, I'm, I'm going to do frontal very quickly. I'm going to leave this open. Whoever wants to come and see the nurse, please come and see. How much money you want? 500 rupees each? I should ask your wife to collect the money for you. Okay. So now, surgery done. Let's reconstruct. Yeah, we cut to make it. A big, a big piece, a big piece. Surgery done. You need to reconstruct. Well, I think you need a bigger one, my boy. Uh, just open the window. Always practice to reconstruct, okay? So, so it, uh, I think it'll be nice for you guys if you're free, come and see the anatomy yourself, okay? Uh, smaller. Ah, 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 ah. ah, good. Can you look for the frontal sets? So I can open the... Do a draft too very quickly. So what we're going to do... For a clival, can you make a give me a cotton ball or another ball, like something like a ball? So you would do a gasket flat. Okay. Can you see? You put an onlay like this. Okay. I need a cotton ball. Or just make a ball. So a gasket flat. So you make a ball like that. No, no, just, just a cotton ball. Ah, just give me that. Okay. Put a piece of fat. Put a piece of fat on top of the gasket flap. Where's my supple flap? Still here, right? Too much bones around the flap, I think. My poor flap, overused. There, separate flap. Okay, remember our flap is very small because of the previous, previous uh, plasty. Okay, separate flap to hold it up. Okay, lock drop. Come rest very quickly. Right. I think that everything is blocked. Huh? Uh, you you can for reconstruction you can. So now let's go very quickly to do our. Frontal. You have 45 degrees. No, it's fine. I, 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 I shouldn't take long. Please, a minute. First of all, oh, we've cut the middle turbine. Okay, fine. No wonder I'm looking for middle turbine. I'm going to find. Left side is the middle. Yeah? Oh, left side is intact. So we do, we do left, lah. Huh? Easier. So what you need to do, open this. Okay? So depending on how the unfinished process enters inside. So all you need to do is to cut open this area here, an axillary flap. Okay? Yes, sir. And lift it up all the way up mm. to the top here as well. So this gives you until you come to the septum here, go backwards until you see the first Old factory, the no. hmm. until the back here. Okay. Now you have, once you have done this, okay. once you have done that, actually flat down here. Okay, Kiss and punch. The problem is we don't have a a frontal set. So remove the agonizai. As you remove the agar nasi, your frontal will come into view for you.
if this patient has got frontal, that is, the curate, a ball club, ball club. So now, after we remove that, this is your frontal. Can you see, guys? Okay. So once we have done that, this is draft two A, correct? Okay. Uh, two cutting. So if we if we use and cut up to the middle turbinate, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Up to the middle turbinate here. Can you see? Yes. I'm yes, going to enlarge this up to the middle turbinate. That's draft two B. Correct? If I enlarge up to the septum, mm -hmm. that's to be. Now, crescent punch? Uh, we need a curved crescent punch if you have. So all we need to do is to remove this and you're removing the anterior wall of the frontal. So sometimes I feel instead of drilling, if you use a good sharp crescent or, or horseman, or cobra, you get a frontal. Can you see? Yeah? So this guy's frontal isn't so big. Maybe we'll, we'll open and see. There's only one way to find out anyway. Do you have a frontal? Ball top? It's frontal, uh, guys. Yeah, wait, uh, I show you. Hold on. You hold the scope here? Hold the scope, hold the scope. Hold this. I use, let me show you my IGS. Yeah. No, no, you have to focus. Hey, eh, can you see anything? Light, light, light. No, no, no. Can you see the. Yeah. It's frontal. Very nice, sir. Thank this you. is. Thank you so this much. This is my nice. IGS. So all you need to do, so his frontal is not big, okay? So all you need to do is now, crescent punch again? Okay. Go laterally, go medially, until you reach the septum. So this is draft 2B, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You do draft 2B on both sides, mm -hmm. you join them, that's lot of You guys? Yes, sir. Okay, we started at 2.30. 2.30? Mm, thank you. Thank you, sir. So it is... 4.15. 4 okay, so 1 hour, 45 minutes. Thanks to Shashi thank Kumar you, and Bolgai. Thank you very much. So... And then what you want to do... Is it a tooth process? Okay, thank you. But what you want to do is you want to go into the right plane. So once you're in the right plane, it opens like a book. So that's the plane. Can you see? You're just above the fascia. That's the fissure. The clear the screen? Oh no. Okay. Is it clear the screen now? Yes, sir. It's clear. Yes. So now we're gonna go and dissect until we are able to see the fissure. Same way. You want to cut posteriorly a little bit so that your self-retaining can go in very nicely. Once you have done that, you want to make another big C that will, and then we'll push all the tissues upwards. Okay. There we go. Until you're able to expose the entire bone. So now you can see the entire mastoid portion is exposed.
But what we need to do is now we're going to dissect Elevate. What are we taking? I'm going to cut the ear canal two and two if required. Yeah. Mastoid tip. And now we're going to cut the ear canal two and two. I can see the parotid coming into view. And then close the ear canal in the blind sack fashion. Okay? Soft retaining, a nice big soft retaining. So after we have done that, you have soft retaining, a big one? So, so now we are going to cut and remove all this tissue until we have a bare Good. Let's remove all this bone, all this soft tissue. Then up to the zygoma. Okay, so can you? Excuse me, sir. Can you find focus? Find focus. Yes. Where's the yeah, find focus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find focus is, uh, I'm this. Thank you, sir. Keep this. Lens, sir. Yeah, so, things are beginning. Is that clear? A little centralized, sir. Centralized. That's it, sir. Now. They are reduced to probably 300 now. Okay. 200, 254, this one. This one is 250, 300, 350, like that, step-wise. Yes, sir. Okay, is that clear now? Better, sir. Better? Better. Okay, come. self retraining Do you have big, sir? Do you have a self retraining Any? self retraining A big one. So once uh, you don't have a self okay, retractor. retractor. So once we have done that, then we can start drilling. Suction. Let's go. Let's go. Zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah. That's fine for test. That's fine. Where do you press? You press here. It's not moving. Good. 
Is a full speed, huh? So now what we're going to do is we're going to start. Can you, it's uh, not locked, uh, guys. It's, it's wobbly. It's, is it locked? Or? Is, is it locked? No. Maximum speed, huh? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to What is wrong with you? Okay. The, the drill is wobbling. Wobbling. Can you check the drill? Okay. Uh, uh, the the uh, steel, uh, steel made body, like, uh, tip is carbon. So, little wobbling is there. I see. It's is this the biggest cutting you have? No. This is the biggest cutting. It's going to be a long day there. Okay. So what we're going to do now, find your enemies first. And your enemies, in this case, is the viewer. So this is now, you're now going to find the middle cranial fossa. That's most likely the middle cranial fossa. So once you've found the middle cranial fossa, then, can you see guys? Yes. Then we are we look for the fossil final fossa. Uh, you guys got a bigger drill, Lisa. Yeah. This is too small. So now I'm just going to open the mastoid. Okay, now let's now the long bell. Yeah, so I can control it. Uh, it's a small bird. So what we want to do now is we want to go into the end firm. So the end firm will be much deeper inside. Now, can you guys see that? Yes, sir. So now we are in the end firm. Wobbly as well. And that's probably the sigmoid finest coming into view here. Okay. Fine, 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 So now what we want to do is to open up the mesh part space a little bit more.
So I'm going to open up the attic now and find the middle cranial fossa again. So this, this doesn't look like a very sclerotic mastoid. Huh? And I'm not surprised because remember the, even the phenoid wasn't, wasn't pneumatized well. So usually if your pterygoid plates are not well pneumatized, your mastoid are not well pneumatized either. We wrote the paper on that actually. We looked at pneumatization of the pterygoid plates and the sphenoid sinus, and they are more or less correlating. They correlate with the that's letter symmetrical kind of coming to view, guys. Can you see? So what I want to do now, that's letter semicircular canal. Can you see, guys? So now what I want to do is go underneath to the mastoid tip. That's mastoid tape coming to view. The sclerotic mastoid, but fine. Let's see what we can do. So what I want to do now is to make the space bigger. One of the problems I have is the shaft is very long. So I find it difficult to control the drill because the shaft is very long. So when you do this, you want to do with a smaller, a shorter shaft, and you want to do with a long, with a big burr. A small burr like this, a cutting burr, you will, so that's, dura in the, uh, that's the dura of the pre-sigmoid. Okay, so now that's probably a sigmoid sinus. Okay, can you see that? Yes. So now let's do retro sigmoid now. So now we go behind the, <laughs> the whole thing just came out. Okay, it's all part of the plan. The whole shaft just came out of the drill. Okay. Now, I'm going to go That's my toe sigmoid, guys. Can you see? Yes. Sigmoid sinus, and I'm going behind the, the sigmoid sinus. Uh, the, the endoscope you all still have, my guy. Can you ask them to keep the endoscope ready? You pick it back. The way? The, the, the scope is not much money, but not ideal, just the camera system. Guys, can you see how thick the retro sigmoid bone is? Can you see, guys? Yeah? So that's yeah. retro sigmoid now. The can is central, I think. Okay. So I want to find the view of the retro sigmoid. Oh. Okay. So this is the sigmoid finest here. Go slow because I'm using a cutting drill. And then you want to do retro sigmoid. Can you see how much you need to drill? There. I can only see the sigmoid sinus there quite nicely. And that's the dura of the retro sigmoid. So usually I give this exposure to my neurosurgeon. I give retro sigmoid and three sigmoid so that they, they don't have to compress the cerebellum. And you can see how fast we're doing it. So if we can do it this fast with uh, a small diamond, and a long burr, can you imagine how fast we will do it in real life when we have sharp, large burrs and a stylus drill? See guys? That's Dura, can you see? Emissary Wayne. 
It's actually bleeding, huh? The amateur vein. So that's what your sigmoid there. Now, what I want to do is to find and follow the transverse sinus. So you see the drill is wobbly. Can you guys see that? So this is dangerous in real life because you can't control the drill, yeah? But dissection is okay. That's transverse sinus, guys. You can... Did you clear the screen so far? Yes. How much posteriorly we have to go? Yeah. How much posteriorly we should do? This is skull dissection. No? I'm showing you all the approaches. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doing surgery. I'm showing you all the approaches. <laughs> That's what we are here for, right? To show you all the approaches. <laughs> okay, that's it. So for a vertical sigmoid, you can go all the way down. Okay. That you are. Guys, can you see? Yes. So once you have dura, you can just nicely expose the dura. Okay. That's dura of vertical sigmoid, okay? Yes. Yeah. The same way. Let me send. Make this center again. Uh, focus this one, right? This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is that clear now? Yes. Yeah. Better, right? So now I'm going to remove ethnic region. And identify the manipulative fossa. So once you know where you remember, this is not a temporal bone dissection, huh? This is a skull base dissection. The skull base dissection make all your enemies your friends. And who's your enemies? The dura. So this part you do with a diamond. You don't do with a cutting, okay? I'm doing with a cutting to save time. In real life, I will do with a large, large diamonds. Okay, so now, you are now going to cut and expose the ossicles. I think we are about to see the facial now. Okay, so let's see. We have a small problem because we can't extend the head anymore. Technically, we need to extend the head much more. But that's probably incus coming into view. Can you hold it? Okay. Okay. Can you see letters in the circular canal now, guys? Is everything on the screen? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, good. We're able to see, sir. So now, let me extend this. Oh, yo, this bill is so small. <laughs> it's taking me forever to do. This is what is a patient, huh? This is how you build patients. Okay, now, okay, we need, you see, it's a very sclerotic method, guys. Can you see? Lateral semicircular canal is here. Even before posterior, sigma sinus to here is so one, two. So it's a sclerotic method, okay? Good. See me doing a difficult one, then your life will be easier. So we're going to do a, a skull base in a sclerotic mastoid. So now, final dual angle. Okay, the same way now, I'm going to expose the sigmoid sinus. So we expose the sigmoid sinus. Uh but the sake of post reagate, sir, uh, okay. if you are doing only mastoid and not uh, approaching skull base, yeah. is it necessary that you expose the dura and sinus all the time? 
depending on what you're doing. If you're doing a skull base exposure, suppose you, it is not because the triangle of attack requires. You're doing what? Uh, you're doing a cortical mastectomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you don't need all the. But this is not temple bone dissection. No, I just told you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a skull base dissection. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> This is not a temple bone dissection. No, no. There's yeah. a. I mean, uh, while well, uh, the CMEs go on, yeah. some are in favor of triangle of attack where you expose them. Some are in favor of McEwen's triangle where they do not expose and depend on the pitch and timber of the drill and the thin plate of bone is left behind. Which okay. you prefer? So basically, if you're going to do a, if 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 you are coming doing a lateral bone dissection, it's like a you're going scuba diving. Yeah. If you're doing a temple bone dissection, you're learning how to swim. So you learn how to swim first, okay. then you come to lateral bone dissection. <laughs> so this is a skull-based dissection. Okay. That's why I started with middle cranial fossa, right, right. retro sigmoid straight away. Right. All right? Okay. So if you can do this, then you don't worry about you don't worry about McEwen's triangle and all that. Okay. So I'm going to remove. And you can see the obstacles there. Can you see? I'm still using a large cutting burr. I'm not changing my burr yet, huh? Okay. Can you see the ossicles now? Yes. You can yes. actually see the superior malleolar ligament as well. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? Yes, yes. Can I have an elevator or something? Something to push it down? But can you see how fast we did the dissection? Yes, all right. yes it's all anatomy, 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 nothing but anatomy. We all speak different languages, but one language that all surgeons speak. Uh, can you use face elevator or something bigger? It's fine. Uh, yeah, I don't know, McDonald's or something. Or McDonald's or something big. This is too small. Uh, but I want to elevate the bone. Yeah, yeah, face fine. Face fine. So, what you want to do now is to push the bone over the sigmoid sinus down. Can you see? So once the bone over sigmoid sinus is down, you can just flick it. You got a bone nibbler? There. I'm pushing the sigmoid sinus from his canal. Can you guys see that? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. So, can you hold on to this? So once you do that, then you are able to drill. Okay. Hold on to this. Hold on to this, yeah. Once you do this, then you can push the, sig the, the sigmoid sinus down. And then follow it. Follow it down to the Tip. Yeah. You, you can see how the drill is wobbly. Huh? Yes. <laughs> so, so this is what you don't do in skull base, okay? So now push the sigmoid sinus down. You get a shelf of bone, then you can drill quite easily. Okay. Uh, uh, either you can do a Bill's Island technique way, yeah, or good. you can just push this down. And drill the anterior leg. So if you drill this, sigmoid sinus coming into view, then you can do the pre sigmoid exposure. Like you are doing what? Push it down, maybe the suction, Make the tube, bone. suction tube can act as a buffer between the drill and the sinus. Yes. Okay, can you see the 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 pre sigma dura? Yeah, the portugal pressure dura. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Yeah. It's clear, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. The same okay, face elevator again. So now, so what we need to do is to remove all this dura tone. Now you're supposed to use a diamond drill. Okay. In interest of time, I'm going to use cutting. The sound is changing. When I go close to Dura, the sound changes. There, sound is changing. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. That's how you know you're close to the Dura. So there, you see? 
Yeah. yeah. Elevator. So what I'm doing exactly is how, how I do in real life. The only difference is by now, I would have changed into a diamond. That's the pre-sigmoid. Okay. And being as lazy as I am, I will end up using a bone nibbler by now. And then I'm going to remove all this bone. Yeah. Now we're going to come to pre-sigmoid. That's your endolymphatic sac. Okay. Can you see, guys? Yeah. This triangle is endolymphatic sac. Okay, guys? The yeah. same way, I'm going to push all this down. And now we are going to drill and look for the bug. Okay. Right? Canal wall up. Later, I'll do canal wall, depending on the exposure. It depends completely on what I'm doing and what I need to do. So I don't tailor make my incision depending, like I'm going to play sigma, sigma. I just do whatever exposure I require. Sometimes when you classify things, it spoils your exposure. So now let's follow. The jugular bulb. You open the mastoid. The problem with a small cutting is you tend to plunge. Yeah. Okay. Now, can you see the jugular bulb coming to view? Can you see the. Guys, <laughs> I like the way this uh, drill is kicking back. It's like an old motorbike, you know? Doom, doom, doom. Fine. Every time it's kicking back. You're a bony blood, no? The guys, can you see the blue here? The jugular bulb. Yes, sir. So when you're approaching the skull base, the oh, exposure of endolymphatic sac <laughs> is mandatory. We have to expose the endolymphatic sac, sir. It's too much. Yeah. It, 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 the kick is too much. No? Yeah. Now I'm just going to use the that's endolymphatic sac coming into view. Okay. You see what I'm using? I'm using a face elevator. Yeah. This is what happens when you have rhinologists doing ear work. <laughs> yeah. See, this is your endolymphatic sac. You see? Yes, yes. I've yes. just opened the sac. Okay. Yes. Can you see? There? The double, that, just a sac. Yeah. yeah. See. And that's your endolymphatic duct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Excellent, sir. Uh, bone blood? Yeah. No, no, no bone blood. No bone blood. Okay. Can you give me a diamond there? Uh, this is too big. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> This is the simplest and fastest way of exposing the sac and duct I have seen. No, but <laughs> what I'm showing is what I do in real life. <laughs> you, should, you should see me operate in real life. It's exactly the same. Because everything is anatomy, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just anatomy. How many birds have we used so far? How many birds have we used? Only one, right? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's just anatomy, anatomy, anatomy. So now, I want to find a juggler bulb. So by right, I'm supposed to use that, guys. See, juggler bulb coming to view. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? So juggler bulb. Water. Can you see juggler bulb there? Yes. That's facial nerve yeah. and juggler bulb down there. Dr. Point. Can you see facial nerve? It's diagnostic and. Facial nerve. Huh? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. This is special yeah. and behind that is the developer. Yeah. Okay, guys? So now let's Okay, so now what you're gonna do is so what I would do real normal life, I'll use bone nibbler for this. Can you see? Yes. Of, but now my will drill. Drill is not working. Drill not working, guys. Okay, now it's working. Okay. okay, boss. So now we are going to go along the sinodural angle. 
there. The superior physical science is coming into view. Yes, yes. Sir. yes. In the morning I told same thing. Superior physical science, which joins with the transfer science, then it forms the required science. Then this is the jugular wall. This is the facial nerve, and this is the not the jugular. Posterior canal wall, middle cranial fossa. This is the inferior master area. Are we changing now? Can I do the language? Sound changing. Middle cranial fossa. Uh, as per the classification mentioned above, can we, we call it type 1? Come again. Jugular bulb. Okay, there, middle cranial fossa. Can you give me the first uh, right again? In type 1, all hypotypanic air can pass. Exaggerated, okay. Because it looks quite low. There, middle cranial fossa exposed now. Yes. So with this now, this is the exposure that I will give my neurosurgeons if we are doing a fifth nerve schwannoma. It drains into the transverse sinus. Okay, this is a then sigma sinus. Okay. See, middle cranial fossa. Yes, sir. Expose all the way up. So drill again. So now we can drill down here very nicely. But tomorrow, if you guys want, I'll show you all the bleedings from the sigmoid sinus, regular bulb, or I can show you all the surgical approaches in real life for posterior canal fossa for lateral skull base surgery. And then, then I show you cochlear implants. Okay? During the middle cranial fossa approach, we have to go up to the anterior end of the root of the diagram. It depends on what you're doing it for. It depends on the exposure, whether you're doing it for schwannoma. Or in the tumor, your is fitness schwannoma or the meningioma here. It all depends on the location. Okay. Yeah. So, what I suggest is don't fix in your mind the approach. Let the pathology dictate your approach. Open as much as and as little as required. As much and as little as required. And That's, for the beginners, you can see the slant of the dura here. This is not a flat line. Yeah, it's a sclerotic mastoid. It, it, it is slanting like this. It's a difficult mastoid. Yeah, yeah. This this has to be kept in mind. As it approaches here, it comes down. It, there is a slant which we must keep in mind. Otherwise, we'll drill like this. This is this will prove dangerous. While the jayoma provides you the space when it is narrow here, at the same time the dura also will come down. We have to keep this in mind when we are uh, uh, using the purchase of uh, jagoma here for space. Now, this land has to be kept in mind. So, now that's a super sinus. Yes, sir. Did you guys see that? Yeah. yeah. How's the elevator again? It's sorry, the elevator again. The first elevator. So, I'm using a free. Elevator for an autology case. Yes. <laughs> okay. The same way, I'm going to remove this bone here. Okay. Usually, I, I, I use a bone nibbler. Maybe once we reach this thinness of the bone, yeah. this previous uh, rhinologist elevator might prove the least can traumatic. That's right, Mr. Punch. It what might prove least traumatic, sir. Yeah, so I, I, I use bone nibbler most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same way I use Kaizen punch. Dura, open up. Please. A small one, yeah. Oh, no, no, you, you need the 45 degrees. Yeah, it's okay, I'll try this. It's a bit big, but we'll try. Oh, you. I think it's too big, like guys. You have a smaller one. You see? How yeah. nicely you can remove all you need is a bone nibbler. You see, guys? Yeah. Remember, I was telling you that for me, bone, the burr is very precious because we, we cannot we reuse back our burrs. And each burr is very expensive. So I try my best to minimize my burr.
Okay. Burger, okay. drill again. So now I'm coming to the thin line of gold, the sidewall dual angle. Can you guys see that? Okay. By right, I should be using a diamond bar. Yes. Okay. Elevator. But if you do use a cutting bar, it's a good experience to train your hands to feel. So when I teach in courses, I always tell people, you should do a diamond bar in real life. But in courses, you do cutting bursts so that you learn how to control. There you see, guys. Middle cranial fossa, posterior cranial fossa, here. Is this Trotman's triangle? Sorry? Is Trotman's it triangle? Trotman's triangle? That's the question. Trotman's triangle. I can't even Basic remember what's Trotman's triangle. Trotman's triangle, uh, a bounded to superior lobeda, mid-mid triangle, posterior lobeda. Three-sigmoid area. I, I just know how to the I labyrinth, follow the tumor. I don't see superior petrosal sinus. I've got La no labyrinth in front. I just I just know how to operate and I know how to give the exposure, depending <laughs> on where the tumor is. Trachman or no Trachman. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I give the exposure purely based on where the tumor is, right? Eh? There. there you go. Sign your dual angle coming into view. Okay. Can I have a new glove, guys? My glove got stuck in there. I need a new pair of gloves as well. My glove got stuck in there. Yeah. Guys, can you see? Sign your dual angle. Okay. There. Don't think that uh, sign your dual angle means. Uh, huh? Do, huh? Challenge for them. Don't think that uh, sign your dual angle means segment plate and the sinus plate is going to join. No. Uh, what will happen exactly at the floor of the middle cranial fossa where the sorry, superior petrosal sinus? Uh, then uh, with giants to the transfer of sinus, it will come from the uh, occipital protons to anterior. With giants and then turns as a uh, 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 transfer sinus and sigmoid sinus. So that remember that the, it is a junction of superior petrosal sinus. Uh, okay. Then it takes the turns as a sigmoid sinus. That is the sinus. Let's line. hope we can now. In superior petrosal sinus giants the transfer sinus here. Once it joins, it turns and becomes the sigmoid sinus sigmoid like sinus. this. Okay. That so before it forms the sigmoid sinus, the superior the petrosal sinus joins it. Are we true? Then it forms the sigmoid sinus here. That is called as a sinusoidal angle, not uh, uh, communication between the sinus plate and the uh, uh, segment plate. Okay. Okay, guys. So this is now. Let me go for a Sorry. Let me go here. And let's see whether there, sinusoidal angle. Here. As long as the, the, the drill doesn't kick back like a motorbike, we're okay. Can you see, guys? Yes, sir. Hi. See? This is what I was telling you about. You saw the kick? Yes. So how the drill kicks? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, now. Let's go this here now. Okay, now let's look for yeah, facial and come to look at now. Yep. The facial the diamond? Is very closely related with the our uh, amputated end of this canal. Can the diamond? The portion comes before the geniculate ganglion when it takes. That guy is special now. That is very close to the amputated end of the superior semicircular okay. canal. Next is the diamond? horizontal portion is very close to the lateral semicircular canal. 
where are the mass transduction where the amplitude is very closely uh, related with the amplitude end of the so that first oh, most of the surgeons what they will do they discalculate the patient now later they, are, they want to go for the discalculation of the semicircular canal okay guys you have to pressure nerve guys but don't do this sir huh? don't try to open a pressure nerve with a large cutting diamond cutting burr like this sir huh? we are not getting the picture as yet sir huh? oh, we are no not picture, getting the picture wait, wait, wait. as yet right right Yeah, yeah, quite as well. Then we need to. I think the display has to be switched on again. I think it's done, sir. So Do you have anything coming on? No. No, sir. No, sir. Not yet. Okay. So I'll just tidy up a little bit. We're waiting for you guys to. Yeah, that's juggle about coming to view. Okay. We didn't get yes yet, sir. Okay. In the meantime, I'll just tidy up a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, now this one. This is the maximum speed, I guess. Huh? We are with you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Can you see guys yeah. now? Let's face yeah, yeah. up now. And just juggle about down here. Watch it again. And just juggle about. This is the blue here. Yes. Let's juggle about there. So now I'm just going to dissect and drill up all this. Huh? Except near the dura or sinus. Yeah. Why can't we use the cutting, sir? Anyway, we are doing mutilative surgery. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, yeah but your cutting that, is. Why don't we use the cutting bar only? Your your cutting is uh, kicking back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that right structure? Your 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 the cutting bar is kicking back. So very very okay. difficult to control. Okay. Okay. It's too big, Lava. Just too big. Am I giving back the the old one? Yeah. Let me let me let me just open up this one there, please. So now let's look for the posterior semicircular canal. You see? Yes, sir. Yeah, so that's the problem. Yeah. It, it kicks back and then, uh, then your, your entire dissection is gone. Okay. Uh, let's just use the diamond for time being. Yeah, let's use diamond for time being. Yes. You guys, can you see so far? I'm now going to go into the middle year space already. The dimension. Yeah. So now, 
go above the facial nerve and you go into middle ear space. So thin all this. And I'm going to go into the middle ear space now. Is rerouting the facial nerve mandatory in all cases? No, no. We don't. We have stopped doing that for a long time already. See, if you look at this, I'm already under the facial nerve. Can you see? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? yeah, I'm already under the, just the inferior part of the facial nerve already. So now, I'm going to go to the middle ear space. I'm using a, I'm using a big, di big cutting though, big diamond though. So by right, I choose a smaller one. That will take me straight into the middle ear space. Okay. Yeah. The bird's too big. So anyway, so now let's find the face, follow the facial nerve all the way. Now take out the ear canal. I'm coming to the first Janu. Don't let go the head. If you like to hit the whole thing, it falls back. No, I can't do anything. No, no, don't worry. It's not the ideal for this thing to do a dissection, as you know. Now, for my uh, junior colleague friends here, yeah? you can see the facial nerve becoming lateral as it comes towards the stylomastoid foramen. Yeah, yeah. It's at a depth in the middle, but it becomes lateral here. So, I've gone, so, I'm going under the facial nerve. Yeah, yeah. So, while doing canaloplasty, there. You but should that, be careful in the lower portions, otherwise you will be injuring the facial nerve here. There, jugular bulb, guys. Can you see the blue here? Yeah, yeah. yes. That's yeah. jugular bulb, yeah. under the facial nerve. Yes, sir. There. That's jugular bulb. I'm sure, I don't know whether you can see clearly on the screen or not. That's jugular bulb down there. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to elevate the tympanometal flap, and I'm going to bring down the ear canal. One is quite blunt, but at least it's not picking. How's the elevator? And now, I'm going to enter the middle ear space. What, what is somebody doing, by the way? Yeah, I think so. Let's cut off. Give me a scissors. Let me. Uh, anything? Yes. Anyway, I just took out the whole skin. Okay, like cut. And cut. Okay, good, 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 good. So now we can go into the middle ear space. And then we can do. No, I, I, I created it. I wanted to go inside. Yeah. And this one, we need to remove this as well. Yeah. 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 So now you can give me a cutting drill. Cutting, cutting drill. Huh? Small cutting drill. No, no, no. <laughs> Sir, in life during surgery, would you like to preserve that skin? Or? No, it depends. If you're doing a blind side closure, no. Okay, okay. It depends blind, on what you're doing. So blind, like said, blind sack closure. Okay. Yeah, so it all depends on what we're doing. So like in this case, we're just doing a skull bit, so I'm just doing everything. Okay. It's just an anatomical dissection. Okay. It doesn't... Uh, it's, see, like just now we're doing posture skull base. Okay. It was my... When we're doing posture skull base, we were doing like trans clival, trans... It was module by module. This is too small, boy. I want a big one. The one just now we used was good enough. Cut, cutting. Okay. The endoscope is here? Endoscope. Okay, now I'm going to take away your hypotympanum. The central license. You got a bigger diamond? Centralized. Oh, bigger, big, big, bigger cutting. Picture a little more so because yeah, okay. bigger, a little bigger, bigger cutting. down. A bigger cutting, yeah. A, a little more down. 
This is okay? A little, Centralized. A little, Centralized. A little more. Yes, yes. That's okay, sir. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, oh, this is too big. Am I like be faster anyway. I'm going to drill off the hypothenem. And when I do that, we should be able to see the jugular bulb. Jugular bulb, okay. Yeah. The only problem is it's a big diamond, a big cutting, and this flow will kick again. Am I might like to kick the kick back, like what to do? Can you see the blue coming to you? Yeah. Let's double about. There. So I'm good. Now I'm going to remove all this board. Yeah. All this, the external the tympanic plate, you know? Okay. Can you hold the head, please? Can you hold the head like that? Can you some water, guy? There. Can you guys see that? It's yes. It's blue here. That's jugular bulb. Lots of water. Or maybe I go lower power. Should I go lower power? Be easier for you, I think. Or it's oh, too yeah, low. Ah, uh, this is okay. Guys, okay, guys? So now. Okay. Let's see. Elevator again. So with, I'm going to go under the facial nerve. Remove this bone from the facial nerve. Can you see the facial nerve is now completely exposed? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. And if you go under the facial nerve, you go to jugular bulb. So jugular bulb will be under the facial nerve here. Do it again. Maybe you just give me cut diamond again. I thought. I'm scared I can't control this bird. Right. This thing from my leg. Okay, so I'm going to go off hypotympanum. Okay, and that's jugular bulb, guys. Can you see? Yes, sir. Huh? Okay, give me a uh, diamond. Okay, good. Um, if possible, can we see the jugular bulb and character side by side with character of jugular spine, sir? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Show, I'm going to show you. Yeah. So I'm under the facial, uh, the facial now. Yeah. And that's jugular bulb. Okay, can you see? So the best way to do this would be to actually cut the jugular bulb completely. Yeah, let me open up the small Then you can see the jugular bulb coming to you. 
So his jugular bulb is not very big. It's only up to here. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Usually the dominant jugular bulb will come up to here. Okay. His jugular bulb is small. That's jugular bulb. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you already exposed the jugular bulb that you can see. So now what I would like to do is to open up this and remove the ossicles now. And then you will do, I will show, I will open up and show you our biggest enemy in skull base and how you identify him. That's the buttress he's smoothing. You have to the, the buttress. canal wall with the superior portion of the external artery, bony external artery canal. That's, That's the, the buttress he, that is, he's smoothing. And then he's smoothing the posterior canal wall now. Okay. Give me a pick. In real life, do you do an experimental sigmoid compression or a digestion? Uh, experiment. But now we hardly do. Can you see that pointer here? We hardly do, you know, at least. We don't, we don't, we don't do the. Um, no, we, we, we don't do jugular polymer. Okay. Humor cinema. Incredible point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the incredible point. There. Is a bone window? It's like, can you see yeah. the round window? There's a round window down here. Okay. Maybe I should go in a higher power, then you might understand more. That's the incredible pointer to the facial nerve. Down window, you right? Can you see, see how beautifully he's pointing towards the facial nerve here. Give me a pick. Huh? Uh, yeah. That's the incredible pointer. So I'm going to remove this bone if I can. Yes. Without dislocating the ossicles if I can. Yes, excellent, sir. Are we successful? Excellent, sir. Yes, excellent. Are there? Yeah. Okay. Okay, can you see the guys? Yes, yes that's there. a beautiful incredible pointer, sir, towards the facial nerve. Yeah. So the coronal is so intact. That is your facial nerve yes. here as well. The same way. You can just during tomorrow cochlear implantation demonstration. This is going to be a very important point. Okay, so here you can see when I see that. That's your Jacobson Arnoldson nerve. Can you see that? Today, yeah. yes. Okay, so now today, today is a uh, what's that? Okay, okay. So can I have to do it? No, no, no problem. No, no. So, about cochlear implantation, you'll be talking no. Tomorrow, yeah. Then I was showing them this becomes important. Because post we have to identify this. Okay, guys, so what I'm gonna do now, remember I drilled and showed you all the sigmoid sinus. Now let's identify the character. Look for the dissertation tube opening. Okay. And then I'm going in front of the cochlea. Structure will be there in front of cochlea. What's that? Yes, can you hold me? Structure in front of cochlea. Are you talking to me or? Are you talking to me or to the? Talking to me? No. Can't see. So yeah. now what I'm trying to do, okay, beautiful. Now I can see you clearly. I am trying to find Mr. C. And who is Mr. C? Carotid. Carotid. Yeah. carotid. So let's see. The carotid and the juggler bulb meets like lovers in the tympanic plate. So beneath this long process of incas will be the Incredible bar of bone which I have to identify. Below that, in, there will be a perifacial cell. Hey guys, that's so that you have to go inside yes. for the cochlear implantation. Yeah. This is beautifully demonstrated here. Hey guys, can you ask me? Yes. Can you also cardiac now? Yes, sir. I have not touched the cochlea at all. 
Yeah. Okay, that's your R3. Do I need to uh, focus a bit more? Hold on. A little you more, sir. So you see, I've not touched the cochlea at all. Huh? So the cochlea is still intact. There, that's R3. Fine focus. That's okay? Yes. So you can see how the carotid R3 turns, comes up, turns, I put in panem, and turns like that. So now, okay, okay, that's carry after that. Give me a pick. That was the relationship I was asking about. This forms a jugular bulb. This is the carotid. In between is the carotid jugular spine, and that gets obliterated in extensive jugular glomus jugular, and that is Phelps sign. Ah, that is regular bulb. That's the bulb and oh, bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> can you please tell the NS we have bleeding? Yeah. That's the jugular bulb, guys. Can you I see? Think, I think we have okay. to stop it, sir. Beautiful. Yeah. Guys, look at this. <laughs> jugular bulb, carotid yeah. artery. Yes. So this is where the bone between the jugular bulb and the carotid artery. There. That's the bone between the mother in law. Yeah. That separates the carotid artery and the jugular bulb. There. Carotid artery? Yes. Cause, because they meet together, you know, they run together in the neck. The mother in locks the person. This is this is going like this. This is coming down and forming a bulb here. In between two is the bone. You will not get a better demonstration so, than this of carotid jugular spine. I can tell I'm you. going to open up the jugular bulb a bit more. That's it. See how big is the jugular bulb. Yeah. Okay. So once you open the jugular bulb, you can actually dissect. See, the jugular bulb is not so big. Once you've opened it up, you can actually dissect from the wall. There, the jugular wall, and your nerves will be in front. Yes, sir. Okay? Ah, in front and medial. Can you see? So, I'm going to dissect this. Can you see the, the space I'm dissecting? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a lot of blood, blood guys. I think I'm taking the whole blood from his whole body right now. This is the Phelps. There. Can you see? And this, this is the this bone is, between. Yeah. This is the carotid artery. Carotid and jugular bulb. This is the Phelps one. Okay. Phelps sign is obliteration of this so bone. What I wanted to show you is how difficult is it to injure the artery. You see, I'm still not true. I'm only through the tunica adventitia. Yeah. Tunica media is still intact. So I'm going to poke and then only I can open. Yeah. That's how difficult is it to injure the artery. Okay. okay. Now, now we're going to do transcochlear. Clear guys so far? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Drill? Excellent, sir. So, like I said, this is skull based demonstration. This is uh, not for temporal bone. So, you what I'm going to do, I'm going to open the cochlea now. Yeah. For the junior PG's residents, oh. you won't see a better demonstration of this keratin or jugular spine anywhere. Okay. It is this obliteration that gives rise to Phelps. Yeah, yeah. We haven't done translab. I just forgot. Wait, let me do translab. We'll be done in very, very quickly. Then we we'll do transcochlea, okay? Oh, I won't take long. Transotic, transcochlear. Yeah, is, it, is it in focus? Yes. Okay, good. So what you do is follow the lateral semicircular canal. There. Ampulated end, non-ampulated end. You don't, you don't have a smaller one, guys. Okay, there. Ampulated end and non-ampulated end. This is, this is a bit too big. So this gives you an idea of where the anatomy, the structures are. Huh? So now, oh, this is too small. Yeah. So? It's okay, it's okay. No problem, guys. There are three canals with two openings on either side, but overall, there are only five openings yeah, big, big, because but, of crust commune. So now, I'm going to open the posterior. It's wobbly, right? Posterior. So now we're going to open the posterior there. He's opening the posterior here. A bit of a... The bird is a bit big, but never mind. We'll finish faster, I guess. So once you've opened this up, you want to open the superior. See, it's so big. Can you see? You don't have a smaller one, I guess. No. Too small. Okay, there. 
Can you see superior? This is class communale. And then this is subacute artery, the one's bleeding yeah. here. Okay? What I've opened up, that's that is the amputated end of the superior semicircular canal. That's your cupula there. Yeah? That's a cupula. Can you see that? Cupula, cupula crista, if you are right. Okay. Cupula so is, is a cup. Crista sub, below. Subacute artery. This is your utricle. So you follow the utricle. Well, look at the size of the drill. Okay. You follow the utricle. Can you see? Now I'm inside the utricle. There. Uh, okay, better give me a smaller drill. So if you look at the utricle now, what goes and supplies the utricle will be your vestibular nerves. Okay? Sure. So all you need to do is follow and drill here. That will take you straight to the internal auditory meter. Yeah. Yeah. So now. There. Not yet, maybe it's too small, it should be bigger. No, if you have noticed from there, the vestibular component of vestibular cochlear nerve, the fibrils, ah, will be, the fibrils are coming, it's coming to IM from the utricle. So, there's nothing here when you do this for the first time. You wonder, my god, I'm drilling so much, but it's true, you drill a lot so deep inside. But there's nothing here but the IAM. Okay, can you see that? I am coming to view here. Hey, right. the kick. You saw the kick? Did you all see the kick just now? Yes. <laughs> Okay, that's the IAM, right? Can you see? But yeah. so now, can you uh, a little bit more there? Yeah. Wow, now the double bar is bleeding now. So drill the same level as the IAM. How is he just the kick? Saw the kick again. <laughs> My goodness. Guys, there, that's the IAM. Can you turn again? Okay. We are literally holding the head down because the head is uh uh is fixed, no? The spinal is there. Yeah. That's your internal artery meters. See, sometimes you have to drill along the facial nerve, create a little bit of space. That's your IAM, guys. Can you see? Yes. So now I'm going to go above and underneath it. Okay, give me a pick. Okay, let's go higher, maybe. Okay, let's... Uh, this one, right? Fine. This one. Okay. So we're going to open up the that's the transverse crest there. That's your superior vestibular okay. nerve. Okay. That's the superior vestibular nerve. That's behind that is this build bar, facial nerve. Superior vestibular nerve, inferior vestibular nerve, facial. This is facial. Can you see guys? Yes, sir. Inferior, superior vestibular nerve. 
Oh, we are still using the same big fat sucker. Huh? Oh, we haven't changed yet. Okay. No, my mind's okay. I'm, I'm almost done anyway. Hey guys, can you see? One superior vestibular, inferior vestibular, cochlear, and facial. Okay. Trans cochlear. And then you guys can party, okay? So, cochlear, equidic, can you see? Sir, cochlear yeah. equidic. Sorry? Cochlear equidic. Oh, way lower down. It's near juggler bulb there. Cochlear equidic, most of the time you never see. Na. Have you seen? Yes. I, you, most of the time you don't see cochlear equidic. Endolymphatic, yes, but cochlear equidic, most of the time you can't see. Okay. I'm going I'm to I'm use cutting. Uh. Don't use cutting, okay? So when you use cutting, you stroke the cochlea like you're stroking a cat. Go and follow the contours of the cochlea. So when you dive, guys do dissection, use the cutting drill because it tests your hand, control of your hand. You understand? Then you will be able to operate much easier. This will teach you tactile sensation. Okay, now give me a pick. Okay, you see, I've managed to build the basal, build the basal turn, and preserve the membrane with the cutting drill. That's what you all should practice to do. This is what this is what I meant by tactile sensation. Yeah, give me a pick. Yes, big. What's the time now, guys? Six. Okay. So we started at one, uh, four something, uh, four thirty, yeah. Four thirty-five. With all the. It's okay, uh, for one and a half hours, not too bad, I think, huh? So now there. That's the membrane, right? Yes. This is the round window, correct? So I'm going to connect the round window and let's open up. So this is color, tympanite. That's color tympanite. Okay. Now, if I open this, that is color vestibuli up here. And the center there is color media. media. That's the basilar membrane, guys. Ah, if you want to. Let me see. That's the basilar membrane. Can you see? Okay. Lift it up. Scala vestibuli down here. Okay. Can we zoom in, sir? Can we zoom? Okay. Uh, Slim J, it will. Ah, can, can. Any, anything can do. Guys, you want more zoom, is it? This is too high, no? No, no, we, I think we are comfortable with the previous magnification only, sir. Okay. Okay, wait. I yeah. think we are comfortable with this. Okay, yes, fine. Yes. So, this is round window here, correct? Scala tympani. Can you see? Yes. This is basilar membrane. And scala vestibuli above. Vestibuli. Okay, and this is scala media. Center here, the, the portion here. Okay? Yeah, it's just the thickening. Just the thickening. So, if you want to drill some more. Ah, we are full. If you, you know, the diamond. Can you hold the head for a while? Diamond. So that's basal turn. Okay, so now, can you hold the head, I guess? Okay. So now, let's go to second turn. Can I pick again? Okay. Give me a pick again. So this should be your second turn up here. There, guys. Can you see second turn up there? Yes. There, second turn. Okay, let's yes. insert the electrode. Oh, 
Why is suddenly this? Why is the CSW suddenly bleeding? Right? Why is the jugular bulb suddenly bleeding? <laughs> so that's how you insert to the round window into the scala tympani. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay. So let's leave it there and let's drill around it. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, let's try. So you, obviously you guys are not interested in dinner tonight, I see. <laughs> you all are not interested in dinner tonight, I see. <laughs> but we only tea, yes. Only tea tonight. Let's drill the second turn. Can give me a pick again. And see whether we can follow yeah. that second turn. Okay. This is a spiral, what, spiral lamina. The spiral osseous, osseous, uh, osseous spiral lamina. Let's go. Second turn, guys, can you see? That's the second turn of the snail. Okay. So again, you can see the scala. Oh, this is too short. Slim J doesn't go all the way, no? Yeah, yeah. That's second turn. Okay, there. That's second turn. Can I see? Yeah, let's try and see for whatever it's worth. You can see the basilar membrane in your second turn now? Yeah? Yeah. So let's see whether this can come out or not. This faucet is too short, I guess. I don't think this was meant to... It's okay. There. Can you guys see the fluid movement? Yes. Yeah, because it's, the electrode is too short to come out the other side. So, who would like to come there? Beautiful. Can you see the base lamp? Uh, okay, give me a pick. I, I can see quite nicely from here. I don't know about you guys, but I can see nicely. So, can you see the base lamp membrane? Yes. Okay. Vestibuli. Yes. It's a theory. Sorry. Tympani. Vestibuli and media here. Okay. Can you see base lamp membrane? So, this is your spiral osseous lamina. The future cochlear implant surgeons, please come and have a look. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I stop here so we can go to Ita? <laughs> okay, thank you very much, guys. Thank you, sir. A uh, big uh, round of applause was magnificent. Hey, come. Whoever wants to see the, the, the PGs, please come and see. You don't get to see uh, basal turn and second turn like this. Please clap for my uh, cut to the no. Satya, Satya, and again for my trusted friend. Thank you very much. <laughs>